Hello everybody, I'm Krithik, and I'm going to be running a little bit of Horde of the Dragon Queen, Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, for a daughter and some friends, my daughter and a, some friends of mine. So, uh, I'd like everybody to kind of introduce yourselves and just say hi. Who wants to give? I'll go first. You go, you're already talking. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, my name is Doug. Uh, I am playing Ignatius Yuri, the Dragonborn Oath of Glory Paladin. Am, am I doing a character description as well? Uh, just doing... Since um, since Kevin hasn't been here for it, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, Ignatius Yuri is a hulking Dragonborn, standing about six and a half feet tall. He's a slab of scale and muscle with especially thick shoulders and arms. Got upright posture, heavy metal armor, uh, thick sandals with fluttering feathers that spiral up his legs, like Greek style. Very fancy. And he's a dull brass with crescent frills that jut from the sides of his face. The swoopy things. <laughs> yeah, he's got swo swoopy face, as we call it. <laughs> How about you, Allie? Uh, well, I'm Allie. I'm playing Karen Bramblefoot. Uh, she is a halfling warlock, all-around scamp, and rapscallion. That's about it for Karen thus far in this campaign. <laughs> we'll figure out more as we go, surely. Cool. All right. Uh, how about you, Kaylee? I'm Kaylee. I'm playing uh, a human draconic sorcerer, Kyla Nightgem. Um, one of her ancestors is Lightbringer, an ancient gold dragon. That's where she gets her sorceress abilities from and yes she has gold eyes all right uh we have a couple of npcs in the party we have ug pretty simple character half orc barbarian not real bright uh but but trusting and and likes the group he's uh, got a lot of heart he has a lot of heart bless his heart <laughs> Bless his <laughs> big, dumb head. And then we have Ileana Kirindor. She is a high elf cleric of... Oh, I've done forgot who she is. Saloon. Um, uh, cleric of life. And uh, she's kind of... Everybody else had high charisma, so I think she has that as her dump stat. So yeah, she's a bit of... She's a bit aloof and haughty and just treats the other other people with just sniping disdain we keep her around because she can she can heal but that might change <laughs> now that Cobus scalewort is here why don't you tell us about him kevin yeah hello my name's kevin i am playing Cobus scalewort he is also a dragonborn he's uh not a not the usual bulky dragon board that you would imagine. He's kind of a skinny dude. He's goes around town to town trying to sell things that he collects from nature because he's a drink vendor. Tries to make little drinks, little fizzy drinks. And uh, yeah, he basically tries to use those things to uh, get to enlighten and educate the people of the civilizations to say, hey, look, we can benefit from nature. Delightful. So typically, green dragons are evil. Um, I don't know if that kind of passes down to the green dragonborn. Uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think uh, I think he was probably born in a swamp. Uh, came out of that little egg, probably uh, fending for himself, uh, and uh, doesn't really know much about all that stuff and. I think uh, he's kind of clueless as, as far as what dragon is doing what, and he's just trying to also broaden his horizons. So he's he's more of a loner. He doesn't. Uh... Yeah, exactly. He he depends on the animals and talks to the animals and do all that. Okay. He tries to expand his knowledge by going town to town. So whether your tribe is evil or not is kind of up in the air, or. Yeah, I would say he's pretty clueless on that. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Nature is my tribe. <laughs> there we I go. forgot to mention that Kyla loves dragons, and she's very excited that we have two dragonborn in the party. <laughs> nice. 
Yeah, oh, and uh, Allie, your character's patron is also Lightbringer the Dragon. That's true, that's true. Where Kyla's ancestry comes from. So it's a fine little web we find ourselves in. Mm, yes. Mm. Quite. So <laughs> one of the one of the things that uh, that I asked players to do is come up with a connection to the uh, to the cult somehow. Um if you don't have one in mind, Kevin, I have something, but I'd like to bring it in later. Sure. Um, but if you could, uh, if you could have your own reason, um, there, like, just some reason why you either hate the cult or want to get back at the cult or whatever, or or you're worried about what the cult's doing, or maybe they're upsetting the balance of nature or something like that. Just something well, to kind of drive your character towards plot <laughs> okay yeah i got uh from watching your first episode i think maybe all those kobolds running around raising all sorts of a fuss maybe they uh kind of started getting into my nearby swamp and homeland and started clearing out forest and just doing what kobolds do and laying waste to everything and collecting and stealing i like that. so maybe maybe i'm trying to investigate why the heck these little scaly guys are imposing cool i'd like to go ahead and put your tribe somewhere if i could where are we at the sword coast let's go over to the sword coast i think it's Ooh, never winter wood would be fun let's see here the ice wind dale <sighs> yeah water like my holy work all the good stuff Oh, I forgot. Like, there's a swamp that's later on in the adventure, and I can't remember if it's the High Moor or the Evermoors. If it's the Evermoors, it's like the. Let's see if I can find it. I well, the High Moor is much closer. There's also the Lonely Moor out in the east. There's a the marsh. marsh of Tune. Let me pull up a Google search real quick. Behind the Sunset Mountains. Queen Swamp. Where the heck is that stupid swamp? Da, da, da. The Mirror of Dead Men. Ooh. I don't see it on the map, but I'll try to, to mark that next session. I'll make a little note for myself. It's over here. Um, near... Neverwinter. It's a little bit south. I remember it because uh, I was looking uh, at the map and I was trying to figure out all possible places where dragons could be. <laughs> nice. And I was like, there's gotta be a black dragon there, man. You dragon hunters. You don't know. Ooh, now I wanna <laughs> no, I don't. Now I want to run a game about dragon hunters. Like, <laughs> that sounds like no! it could be a lot of fun, actually. <laughs> it does. I mean, you do love monster hunters so much. That's true. <laughs> it is. Every fight is just against. Him. Where's the Rathalos? Hmm. <laughs> I know about monsters. It's a good pull. Yeah. Thank you. Probably in the Coral Highlands for some reason. God, I love the Coral it's Highlands. So it's so beautiful. cool. It's one of my favorite areas here to be. That's where his his little tribe's somewhere in there. Ooh. <laughs> Got a little bit of applause. Somebody's following us. Huzzah. Hello. Yay! Hello, friends. Thank you for the follow, guys. Yeah, thanks, Hall Hideaway. Welcome to the stream. Oh. Hey, buddy. Hey, how's it how's going? How's it man? going? Cool. He's our good friend. He waves. All right. Uh, so, <laughs> we. Now that that's taken care of, do you want to do a uh, recount, a recap of what happened last week, anyone? I have my uh, my notes file open. So uh, our group started uh, in the midst of a caravan journey on our way to Greenest. Uh, we were looking for a monk named Leosin Erlenthar, who was supposed to be our contact. Uh, on the way there, we were with uh, Cliff, the innkeeper, and a young man named Tom. Or we came across them, and their caravan was being ambushed by kobolds. Uh, so we fought back the kobolds, escorted them the rest of the way back to town, 
And we went to the tavern, sort of got our praise from that. Uh, in the middle of the night, the town was attacked by a blue dragon uh, and a blue half dragon and just armies of kobolds and these cultists that lay waste to everything. They killed Cliff. They took many people away in chains. Kyla had some fun interactions. We were, uh, they shot lightning at us. <laughs> blue dragon did. Yeah, the blue dragon. Uh, they got the attention of the blue dragon wanting to talk to it. I rolled for its that mood. worked fine. And rolled a natural one. So he was cranky and just shot a little <laughs> low-key lightning bolt at him and knocked the party on their ass. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Kyla persisted and was able to parlay with him briefly, and we learned that uh, his egg presumably is being held at a dragon hatchery to the southeast, and maybe that has something to do with why he was assisting them in attacking the town. But Kyla managed to convince him to sort of lay off on the attack, so he's sort of flying around, not doing anything. Yeah, it seemed like his heart wasn't really in it. Like, if he wanted to be doing damage to this town, he really could have been, but he was just kind of flying around and lazily launching a lightning bolt every once in a while. Mondays, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then we made our way to the keep, and I think we spoke with the mayor. Karen charmed the mayor to some end. <laughs> totally stole the dragon egg. Yeah. I mean, I what? No. He did not steal a dragon egg. <laughs> and they don't know anything. So I think I think that's where we left off. Mm -hmm. I was very suspicious. Yep. And uh, so was Yuri, if I remember correctly. Of the, the mayor specifically? Yeah, just the mayor. That sounds <laughs> plausible. Yuri and Karen heard a mayor in a castle and both of their eyes squinted so hard it was audible. <laughs> Yeah, Yuri's, uh, Yuri's background, uh, his link to the cult is that he was uh, just sort of a normal commoner uh, who spoke out against his local lord. The lord took him and basically threw him into some gladiatorial pits where he lived for quite a while and then broke free. So he's distrustful of authority figures in that sense. Karen just doesn't like him. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a castle and she doesn't, therefore he's a jerk. <laughs> You're not wrong. All right. Uh, so, um, I think, and then w one thing to mention, uh, the blue dragon agreed to not killing anyone else tonight. Uh, Very kind. But in exchange, you had to go and get his dragon egg, and you agreed to that. Um, and then he said that uh, he would be in contact with you later. He would send one of his agents. Um, let's see. I would like to point out that he just said he wouldn't harm anyone else tonight. I feel like we're putting a lot of emphasis on that. I have a feeling he might come back in the future <laughs> if he just feels like it. <laughs> he basically made it so he wasn't obligated to do anything. He was, he was, he's a, a dragon of his word, uh, as far as you know, but uh, right now his word is specifically, he won't kill anyone else tonight. It's the letter of the word, not the spirit of the word. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. The fact that he even deigned to speak to us once, uh, I would think he would not be so inclined to do so again if we came back empty handed. Yeah. <laughs> so let's come back full, full handed. Yes. Full -handed. Full -handed. It's probably big. Yeah. So we, so we found the egg, but uh, we were kind of hungry for breakfast. And... <laughs> so. <laughs> very negative this. implications. <laughs> for Dragonborn, especially. Three of our party, the three of our characters start let names start with K. Yay. Oh. Huh. How about uh, that? Kyla, K, and Copes. Cope. And Yuri. <laughs> and Yuri. And Yuri. <laughs> Let's see. Um, all right. Well, with that, uh, I was doing a couple of corrections from last week. So I didn't tell you the dragon's name. Do you want to know it, or do you just want to say he didn't tell it to you? Would so be Kyla have asked, asked, or was that too presumptuous? 
I mean, did we just forget to ask his name, or did he purposely not tell it to us? You didn't ask, and he didn't offer. But uh, Yuri would not have asked. <laughs> From the shadows. Paul, I think Kyla probably would have. She just forgot. Okay. Or I forgot. She was in awe. <laughs> Dragon fear. What the heck's his name? I can't. Oh, I'll zoom in. There we go. I'll put this in chat. It's Lenithan. 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 Oh. Lenithan. It's like Leniathan, huh? Sounds an awful lot like Leviathan. <laughs> Conspiracy. Lenithan. I like Lenithan. He's familiar. Lenithan. Yeah, that sounds good. We'll go with that. He's the mayor. He's the governor. <laughs> Well, if he's the governor, he has a clone because the governor is staring into Karen's One eyes, waiting weekend. for it's all coming together. Instructions. Of course. Oh my, me! The dragon's an illusion. It's really a high-level wizard. Don't worry about it. Suki, don't start up now. <laughs> Hi, Suki. Sorry. Let's see what yeah. else was going on. Oh, and uh, apparently I had put like the governor kind of barking out orders and stuff in the keep, but uh, there's a dwarf named Escobert the Red. He's the Castellan. He's the uh, he's basically the master of the keep and its defenses. Um, so if you wanted to charm him instead of the governor, then that's fine. Uh, we can just retcon that and, and rework it. But, oh, uh, no, no. Governor is fine. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, that's right. You guys uh, asked him to focus the ballista and enemy on the... Uh, yeah, and that didn't the stop the governor from going up and telling people, and the people listened to him, because they just assumed Escobar was, uh, was the one. So, let's pick up there. So, we are in the keep. Uh, there's countless townsfolk are huddled against the walls. Uh, the southern section has been turned into an open-air hospital where the wounded are being treated. Archers on the parapets keep watch on the skies and loose arrows on any, any invaders that stray too close to the keep. Uh, so pretty much the keep is safe. It doesn't look like they're, uh, they're making to siege it. There's no siege weapons other than the dragon, and the dragon doesn't look like he's launching lightning bolts at it. Music. Um, and you, you just gave, uh, you just told them like, quit focusing your efforts on the dragon. Just focus on the troops that are nearby. So the people that were constantly just pushing the uh, ballista, turning it around and round on its bearings, uh, now have a <laughs> a much welcome break because they're not wearing themselves out, just trying to keep the the dragon in their sights. Um, Sounds exhausting. Yeah, so he's invited you inside uh, where there is uh, a dwarf with tangled red hair uh, for his beard. Um, you, you've probably already heard his name a couple of times, Escobert the Red. And he's a, he's a shield dwarf that's in charge here. And they're sitting in front of a table that has different troop movements and other things. And pretty much everything is... Uh, everything is arrayed in the castle for the friendly tokens. Um, there are still a couple more tokens out on the map. Um, uh, one of them is southeast towards the, uh, the Temple of the Fertile Fields over there. Um, and don't think there's anything else if we need more to do tonight then we might go and try to save the mill but i thought we'd just skip that encounter since uh the combat was getting a little bit samey last time um so yeah we uh he's pointing at different things and uh and getting reports in and that's where that's where we're at right now As far as introducing Kevin into the party, I'm going to say that he's just, he comes and goes a bit. Um, sometimes he's 
with you. Sometimes he wanders off into the wilderness for long stretches of time. So that's uh, since he said he could show up uh, probably this month, but maybe not next month. Then, yeah. then uh, I just want a, a reasonable explanation for why he's not around. But worst comes to worst, I don't really care. And you'll just pop into existence and pop out of existence when you're when you're not here. <laughs> Sounds good. Hey, I love that idea about <laughs> wandering off into the wilderness after like a massive battle or something, and just being like, "Oh wow, flowers." <laughs> <laughs> so does this mean uh, we already know Cobus, and he sort of? Sp- splintered off and is now rejoining or are we just encountering him now i think i'd like uh him to be already in the party like you're you're, you're meeting back up with him um okay that but, sounds easy yeah maybe i was just in town selling some drinks and i knew we were going to meet up or something and rejoin you guys yeah you were probably spending the night uh out in the wilderness when you saw the attack and then you made your way to the keep when that happened yeah so you're uh, you're happy to see that uh, that he's here. Um, do you guys want to deal with people being mistrusting of a green dragon, or is that going to get old fast? A green dragon. Um, if it's if it's appropriate to the setting and the story, and it will make things interesting, and Kevin enjoys that, I'm fine with it. Yeah, it's, not... it's pretty much up to Kevin. If he wants to deal with that, well, he will. If not, then the people will be like, ah, oh, it's a dragonborn, and that's fine. I'm not real fixated on, like, you, you're more familiar with, like, the what the dragonborns are and the, what, what that means and everything. Okay. So I'll trust your judgment on that. Uh, I'm happy to go either way, really. <laughs> I, I just, I don't feel like making it a theme. Like, there's enough crappiness in the world where we don't have to pretend to be racist. Um, <laughs> for fun. I thought about doing like a I thought about doing like an emerald or jade dragonborn, but it was getting kind of crazy and complicated because of their breath weapons and all that stuff. So mm. I was like, nah. <clears throat> so, so I was like, I'll just do a green. <laughs> cool. So I, I picture probably what um, I don't have people's names memorized yet. Cobus. Cobus was probably outside uh, helping with the wounded, um, just providing natural remedies and things like that. So he's endearing yeah. himself to the people of the keep, and Eo would probably head over there and, and give him a hand as well. Um, but what would you like to do? Oh, I think we should go... Um get the dragon egg as soon as we can yeah i think that should be our next major move i don't is there really anything that we still need to do in the town is there should we ask around to see if uh anybody knows anything about this lair or is that something that karen already knows about from karen does know about a camp to the southeast she hasn't heard it referred to as the hatchery but there's a decent chance that that's it I feel like there's not much we can do against a raid. Just as a party of five or six characters. So currently the raid is still continuing? Yes, yes. Uh, Mm -hmm. There's lots of looting going on. The town is pretty much surrounded, uh, but you could get out if you really wanted to. Uh, You Mm -hmm. might have to fight through uh, an edge of... Like so the, so, some outliers. How wide very, is the river? Um, it's pretty shallow. Uh, you can cross it in places. Uh, some places you'd have to swim. Other places you could wade up to knee deep water. So Karen's swimming the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, Yuri will turn to the others and say, "There's no glory to be had here. We can't stop what's already in motion. We should be on our way." can make a greater difference that way. Um, the, the the governor says, you, you don't want to go back out there. That's crazy talk. Um, Escobert uh, uh, looks up and sees the towering dragon, dragonborn. and says, laddie, if you're looking for something to do, I've got something for you. Ooh. 
Um, he, uh, he calls you over to the window. You guys have like made it up to the second floor where the planning is, um, going on. And, uh, he points out to the Southeast. Looks like we have people over there. Um, I can't spare the manpower to, to go and get them, but, uh, perhaps you could break their yeah. line. It looks like they're sieging the temple. And who's trapped inside? Uh, the, uh, surely the priest, he's not, he's not around, but, uh, can't really see from here, but, uh, people would have gone there. It's a big structure. Um, yeah, and you, and you see it, it's a big square building made of field stone and a slate roof. Uh, but yeah, it looks like there's a pretty big contingent up on the north side and they're, uh, Looks like they're they've fallen a tree, and they're gonna they're, they're chopping. Um, they're trying to make a, a battering ram out of it. That's looking pretty dire over there. The question is whether we can make a difference, and if we should, would that cost us the time we need to go and find this egg to put a stop to all of this? Um, it seems that they aren't killing as many people as they are taking captive. I've seen a lot of people being led away as prisoners. That's a fair statement. That's still not great. No, it's not uh, No, it's not great, but... But it buys us time. I mean, why do they need these people? Then they would be occupied with taking those people to wherever the prison camp or whatever it is, and we can launch an effect, a more effective rescue mission and get all of the people at once. Whereas now we're just getting one group. As much as I hate to admit it, I'm not sure there's much we can do for the people, the people in the temple. You have questions. Perhaps we should go and ask them with pretty, pretty words. Clenches his fist a little bit. Who, who are we asking? The enemy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I love a chat, but... I... Uh, never mind. <laughs> Turn to the others. Shall we be off? Yeah, I don't think there's much we can do to help them right now. Maybe if they're still sieging when we get back. Oh, he meant, like, should we go? Oh, should we go? Uh, no, Karen, what Karen says stands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that we've established that they're they're taking people away, but their people aren't generally being executed. We're vastly overwhelmed here numbers wise. If we can, you know, make a difference and get a chunk of people back to relative safety in the keep, maybe that's worth doing, but Yeah, we could we could sure use the the healing support in the keep if you could get them there. But if not, I understand. I say we go save him. Yeah, let's go do it. Yeah. We're heroes. Okay. Aaron's just lazy. <clears throat> um the 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 mayor like it's like I I don't know if this is a good idea, but maybe you could send your friends and you could stay back here, Karen. Oh no, nah, it's all good. I should go with my pals. <laughs> You never know what they're gonna <laughs> need help with. Yeah, that that that's probably gonna take at least an hour and a half to get back here. So. Oh dang! <laughs> well, that's a shame. Love um, interest. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get adventure cards. <laughs> okay. I'll happily share my adventure deck with you. All right. Um. It says, uh, really means a lot to me. Uh, I hate to ask even more of you, but if you could bring back any prisoners, that'd be great. I'd like to see why they're attacking, what, what their purpose is. Um, but that's a secondary concern. My main concern is the safety of the people. You got any explosives? explosives. Karen, we don't want to hurt the people in the building. 
no, no, no. We just lob them at the people trying to hurt the building. Um, he could probably give you like flasks of oil. Perfect. Yeah, you, um. I think she, she pats Molly and I was like, don't worry. The town's already on fire. This won't even make a dent. Yeah, like the uh, the the temple itself is made of field stone, so if it gets hit by that, and the and the roof is made of slate tile, so yeah, you're not going to set that church on fire unless you go inside and try to hit some of the support timbers. Don't do that. Noted. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can have uh, up to a couple of flasks of oil each. Mighty kind, thank you. Flasks of oil. I'll add it to our inventory. I think getting rid of their battering ram is the most important thing, because I I think the people are inside the temple, and they're lo they've locked themselves in. Mm -hmm. yeah. It'll take them much longer to get in if they don't have that battering ram. Absolutely, yeah. Um, Sorry. Okay. Uh, well, he uh, he says, okay, come with me. And uh, he, he starts leading you downstairs. I will follow. All right. Uh, the, I will follow Yuri, who is following him. The, you, uh, you make your way down a winding stair into the cellar. And uh, it's dimly lit down here. There's a... Uh, he has to bring a torch in from upstairs. And he reaches behind a massive cask and activates a little secret switch with the sound of stone grinding on stone a section of wall opens up revealing a long passageway musty dank air fills your nostrils as you poke your head into the narrow tunnel moss fills the cracks of the cut stones and parts of the floor are slippery from a slimy residue the tunnel extends well past your torchlight in a mostly straight shot um he pulls off this key ring from his uh from his hip and this key ring is huge it's like six to eight inches diameter um and he has just dozens of keys just jangling on it at as he takes steps through the keep and uh he pulls off a key and he's like at the end of this passage is a uh it's an iron gate um and then beyond that is a uh, it's a, a secret entrance you uh it's it's covered up with dirt so no one can no one should be able to see it but you should be able to to make it outside. Um, this will take you out to uh, the on the map the the number two there. Um, this runs all the way out to the river where you should be able to make it to the fields. Just come back in that way and keep the door locked and hidden if you can. Yuri will take the key and uh, hold it out for somebody with more dexterous hands than him. <laughs> Parents got it. Don't you worry about it. Oh, thank you. And he uh, he holds out a hand to shake Yuri's. Yeah, he clasps it, uh, gives the man a solemn nod. Says, thank you, good sir. We will bring them back if we are able. Godspeed. And uh, after... After you guys start making your way the, down the cramped tunnel, he uh, he hits the switch and the the stone slides back into place. Did we heal up or no? You have not healed up. Okay. Uh, if you want to heal up, um, I could help with that. Uh, that's you charmed the uh, mayor, right? Yes. He offers a couple of healing potions to you for you and your friends. Mighty kind. So two healing potions. I'll look up to see what the heck they do. Potion of healing. Uh, it will heal 2d4 plus 2. And how many of those did he give us? He gave you two. Those were from his personal stash. Oh, personal stash. And he has... Man, this guy's going to die because he won't have any <laughs> healing potions when the castle siege begins. He does have a wound on his uh, 
his arm was in a sling and he has like a, a bloody bandage on it. Um, but he, uh, he didn't use the potion. He was saving it for something important. And he feels like this might be important. Oh, so nice. Yes. What uh, has that, I think as they're walking down away from the gate, Karen says, what's, what's our chances looking like on this one? How y'all feeling? I'm feeling bad. <laughs> what do you feel bad about? Or I guess I'll guess I'll ask it up. What? Why do you feel bad? Uh, mostly all the big dragons, and I'm so small. Just one dragon. Well, I think she gestures to the dragons of the group. These yes, are. I am rather intimidating. I know. These are good guys. Well, oh, yeah, I... but they're not. Thank you, Ugg. That's true. They can just punt me across a field. Oh, I don't know. It, it's been my experience that the smaller you are, the harder a target you are. Really, if anything, uh, the the big one over here, uh, Yuri, should be more concerned. I should be, but I'm not. Exactly. <laughs> so there's nothing to fear. Ugh nods uh -huh. wisely. <laughs> I feel better already. <laughs> What's yes, this? Should... What's that? I just wondered what his wisdom was. Oh, it's an eight. <laughs> That's all. Ever <laughs> so wise. Yes. Well, at any rate, we should really focus on one thing at a time. Yeah. yeah, you're right. So we can go and see what our chances are there and prevail and then go and see what our chances are at the next thing and prevail. Yep. Just one success at a time. Onward. Yeah, if, if you get there and you go like, nah, this is a lost cause, you can just keep on walking and try to steal the dragon egg, and I'll try to figure out what the heck we're doing for that. Yeah, I'll be like, uh, you guys remember Greenest? No. Uh, <laughs> what? Where? <laughs> I've never heard of that place. Okay. Um, is it green? <laughs> so you guys are walking down this, uh, this tunnel, and it goes down for, like hundreds of feet the the two the the really tall people have to hunch down to to get through here um and it's uh it's pretty narrow there's spider webs and down here and it's just very musty and there's a there's a little p water pooling in places and you can hear dripping in the distance and uh you keep walking 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 um we definitely have... Does anybody have dark vision? No. I do not. I don't, but I think I have a light spell. We all have a light spell. Cool. Um, so yeah, you uh, you either have the light spell or a torch or something that's, uh, that's spreading light uh, so that you can see down here. And eventually you make it to this rusty, well-worn gate. Um... And beyond that, the uh, the passage kind of expands out to something more comfortable to stand in. It's about 10 feet wide. And uh, uh, probably about 60 feet past the gateway, there's a uh, there's some sagging wooden timbers or wooden planks that are supporting like uh, piles of earth. You... Um, yeah, and so that that's what you see so far. You you open up the gate. It's super loud, super noisy. Uh, you have to use the key, and uh, you probably even have to use a little bit of the oil to get the lock to unjam. <laughs> nice. Uh, but Luckily, you... Karen always has a can of WD-40 on her at all times. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And uh, so, yeah, you, you open the lock, get past it, close the gate, and you start getting closer when... Cobus, is that your name? Did I say that? Right? Yep. Yes, you got it. All right. So um, you see, like just piles of uh, detritus and uh, uh, 
dry grass and feathers and just a whole bunch of just garbage and your nose picks up a scent of uh, a faint scent of urine um, and you see like a little bit of light glintering off uh, beady red eyes that are in the uh, that are in this what's obviously a, a rat nest and it's just jam-packed full of rats Ugh. Oh my, everyone, look. Look at the majestic pile of beautiful creatures over here. Right, even you're the, entitled to your opinion. Even the pungence of the smell, oh, it's just amazing. You have to appreciate it. <laughs> this is what you choose to sing tales of. Right? Appreciation <laughs> noted. You, you can really <laughs> smell the rat musk. <laughs> That's an upsetting phrase. <laughs> I love the smell of rat musk in the morning. It's Curtis Keith's cologne. Oh, God. <laughs> A couple dabs on each cheek. Oh, de fear. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know that if you just keep walking, you're going to uh, disturb these rats, and it's going to probably be a fight with some... Uh, with a swarm of these things. Perhaps we should avoid them. They're like, so I'm going to draw this out real quick. I think we moved over to a, uh, a road map. Uh, I'm going to use this as like a uh, thing. And like right here is the, the rat nest. And you guys are back probably about 40, 50 feet right now. The edge of the light spell is just glinting off their their eyes. Gotcha. So the only way you'd really be able to uh, get past them would be to maybe dig a side passage, and you don't think you have the time for that. Could uh, I do some druidcraft and kind of vine in the opening? Ooh. Vine in the opening. I don't understand. Just like some basic roots that might be hanging around and just kind of extend them. It's not going to be like a solid wall or anything, but it'll certainly, I would think, slow them down. So you're wanting to... Obscure the entrance. Okay. The... Their... Oh, obscure the entrance of their nest. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, basically, you want to... Uh, you have an entangle spell, right? I do not. I have druid craft. I was thinking like the little local roots and vines that might be hanging around. Let's see here. Druid. It's more of a cover cover their site. Let me read what right. the heck druidcraft is. I've never heard. Of it. Is this like the thaumaturgy or the prestidigitation? Kind of, yeah, druids? Here you go. I got it here. It's uh, whispering to the spirits of nature. You create one of the following effects within range. Uh, you can create a tiny, harmless sensory effect that predicts what the weather will be. When well, that doesn't open, the effect might manifest as a golden orb for clear skies, a cloud. Uh, let's see here. It the... seems a little bit lightweight to uh, to bypass sure. the encounter. Um... <sighs> what well, can rats swim? Because we can. Yeah. If the water is shallow enough, we could just walk across the river and then well you're in a tunnel right now oh i see yeah you're in a tunnel and they're blocking the and the exit out of the tunnel basically i could always breathe fire that's worked very well recently i thought you already breathed fire oh we didn't take a short rest not yet oh, okay never mind then never mind i can't do that <laughs> <laughs> i have fire I have fire bolts, other fire spells, I believe. I could always smash them, but there's so many. It would take a very long time. Yeah, it's, um... I have poison spray that does that. I do have, uh, I could help with the poison spray and do a little dragon breath of my own there. Add a little more poison. Yeah, if so you want to, like... poison me. Yeah, if, if you move to, like, engage, um, we'll just roll initiative. And we'll make it combat. I'm good with that. 
Yeah, I don't think I have Let's anything else that would be of use in this situation. <laughs> oh, where's my stupid... Oh, that's why it's not there. I could command them to get out of the way. <laughs> but, you know, they're animals. <laughs> Sounds more like a druidy thing. Alright, uh, oh. one thing I was going to say was Ia's going to stay back in the keep since Kobus is going with you. Makes sense. He's just going to help out with the wounded and stuff like that. I could speak with him. That's kind of creepy. <laughs> do it, do it, talk to the thing. Uh, I'm in support of if you would like to do that. Otherwise, we can smush them. Yes. I talk to, to the rat. Uh, let's see. You have a spell, speak with animals, right? I do. Ooh. All right. thing. Speak with animals. All right. You gain the ability to comprehend and verbally communicate with beasts for the duration. Ten minutes. So you can talk to them for ten minutes. Hello, precious furry things. <laughs> uh, I hope you don't mind. We were just passing through. We don't mean you any harm. If you would, just give us a, the right away. We will be well on our way. I'll even throw in a few crumbs and uh, some bread that I have, if you like. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, there's a, like... When he starts talking, um, the rest of the group, all you hear are like these squeaks and chitters. <laughs> Squeaky squeaker squeaking. And um, <laughs> and uh, and then all of a sudden the, that that war and just shifts and undulates, and then like several, just dozens of these beady red eyes stare back at you, uh, glinting in your your torchlight. And they say, no kill, no kill, save, save here now. What? You get, you have food? Feed us. Yes, yes. Tasty treats. Um, very good. We will pass by and then I will throw you a little bit of food, okay? You take care of yourselves now. Uh, uh, uh. Yes, you, you, where, where you go? We go outside. Danger. Don't go there. Don't worry. We thank you for your warning. What kind of danger? Oh, scaly things. Scaly things eat the man things. Run. Flee. Safe, safe home here. Oh, don't worry. We will clear these dangerous things, and there you go. You have yourself some food and leftovers. Oh. They like they will be. They chitter among themselves, uh, coming to a consensus. Okay. You have a lovely family. You guys take care of yourselves now, okay? Yes, yes, yes. Food first, food first, and then uh, you, you go. Yeah, I'll throw uh, like a thing of rations down and just let them have it. Yeah, they uh they swarm over it and and chitter at it, and uh, you guys kind of creep down the edge of the path here, careful not to disturb it. Um, and that uh, was amazing. <laughs> uh, and then. And then, yeah, you, uh, you you make it to the barrier. There's Once upon a time, there were hinges on this thing, but they've since rotted away. Uh, and there's like this just pile of earth. Um, I'll, give, uh, I'll give the rest of the group a warning of little scaly creatures waiting outside. Probably cobalt. Yeah. Um, and uh, so in, in order to open this up, you kind of have to destroy the entrance um but what would you like to do after aura oh sorry we were muted i didn't realize that uh, i think first yuri would like to turn to kobus and say what did you tell them to let us pass do they think you are some kind of a rat king <laughs> oh, i wouldn't dream of being such a thing I am nowhere near qualified for that. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you have many rats in your praises. Oh, they are. They're quite a lovely family, really. They're very nice, very reasonable, really. They just require food. I promised them the uh, enemy and uh, their whatever was left over and that we slay. 
leave it for them. Mighty kind. Works well enough for me. So you said we got to a dirt pile, like yeah. blocking our path? Yeah, there's like these rotting timbers that are at a 45 degree angle that are sagging under the weight of the the earth. And um, and yeah, you're, you're at that little dead end of the tunnel. You told us there was a patch of dirt that we could search for that would have a way through? Well, it's... So pretty much the entrance has been buried. And there was a door there, but the door is rotting away and it's sagging under the earth. So basically you have to just push your way out of this. Gotcha. Uh, Yuri's pretty strong. If he Is he able to tunnel his way out or shift things to create a passage for them in any way? Yeah, you're, you're able to do it. I just wanted to make sure because like it's it it can't be undone basically so when you uh when you move to push the earth up out of the way then the the timbers kind of disintegrate and now there's like this gaping hole in the side of this hill gotcha gotcha and i wasn't so sure if you guys had any that. like weird spells or whatever so what about uh, this yeah. druid craft can't can he like make it a I, little overgrown it's very minor like he can make a a flower a seed pot open or a leaf bloom. Yeah. Oh, not, I see. It's not like a uh, wall, like a solid wall or anything. Just stay there for the next twenty four hours, spreading flowers one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you uh, you smash open, like you push open the earth, and it takes a little bit of digging, and uh, but you manage to get your way out, and the rats squeak in alarm. Ah! Um, no, oh, why you do this? And uh, and and they scream and like just chitter and just dozens of them just run past you out into the open. Oh, be careful out there! Remember those scaly creatures. Okay, take care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Bye-bye. you. Uh, so yeah, you make your way out, but yeah, you look back and there's an obvious gaping hole in the uh, in the hills. Mm. Um, well, this isn't very good. Good to see it and go into the keep. How how out of the way is where we are right now? Like, if, if passers by, like, is there any reason for somebody to walk by right here? Is it visible from a distance? If someone was, how big is the if someone was walking uh, along the um, along the river, I'm going to move us back over to where'd the players go? Back to green. Can we collapse? The t- like the entrance that might look weird, but at least there wouldn't be a hole anymore because you said that you you could, but I don't don't know how you get back into the keep with a whole bunch of people since the keep's kind of surrounded with bad guys. Oh, fair enough. Um, but yeah, so basically you're uh, you're out here, so it's not really around things. Um. But if someone was walking around the uh, walking around the the river for whatever reason, then they would see it. I could try to camouflage it with said flowers and whatever. Do you have a survival skill? Ooh, good question. Let's see. I do not. Well, no, I don't. Uh, I'd also take a stealth roll for camouflage. It says uh, survival two. I guess that counts. Yeah. Uh, it, it, if you don't have it trained, you can still do it. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So uh, let's say um, on a success, uh, you manage to to hide everything. On a failure, it's just not quite good enough, and uh, we might have to deal with a uh, an encounter later. Okay. So everybody cool with that? Yeah. Sounds absolutely. good. Eight. It's probably not going to be good enough. So uh, you might have to deal with some cultists on the way back through here. I think you've done a fine job, but there's only so much we can do. We'll have to take our chances. At least it's a little prettier now. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. All right. So you guys are here and you start making your way down the, uh, down the river to the Temple of the Fertile Fields. 
It's a temple to Shantaea, a goddess of life, agriculture, home, and hearth, basically. Um, you start making it closer. You've, you've since doused your light sources so that you can move unseen. There's enough, there's enough moonlight uh, to, to make, um, to give you dim light enough to see, to, to make your way down. It's a little bit slow going, but you make it. Bloop. All right, where are my dogs? Everybody see the little burning temple? I do. All right. Yep. So everything but the inside. Yep. the uh, The temple is a large square shaped building made of field stone with a peaked slate roof. It is taller than every other building besides the keep. Um, and it looks like there's three main groups of uh, invaders that are surrounding the structure. To the north is a mask wearing blue robed cultist and he's directing mercenaries to start battering down the uh, start battering down the the big huge thick oak iron bound doors uh, where did my notes go there they are uh, to the east a handful of kobolds led by four blue robe cultists have started a small fire using bales of hay that they've propped up against this back door it's a uh, smaller door but uh still very sturdy um the hay is wet and it's producing a lot of thick white smoke so that uh that area is kind of lightly obscured um and then another group of cultists is leading a couple of ambush drakes and some kobolds just kind of wandering around uh waiting for one of the groups to um to break through so that they can help Two things. Uh, first of all, what is an ambush drake? An ambush drake. Um, it's a. Do, do, do. I don't know. I actually just had to Google it. It looks kind of like a dragon wolf. Oh. Yeah. I don't know how big it is, but it's like That's... a. It's pretty much yeah. like a. Um, yeah, it's like a, a dragon dog or a dragon wolf. Huh. All right. Um, also, all I don't know how big it is, but. Yeah, they're they're about the size of a of a wolf. Um, oh, there you go. The compendium, compendium has them. Yeah, pretty spooky. And pretty much, um, they don't have uh, they don't have intelligence. Um, they're not like an intelligent being. They they don't have the ability to talk or anything like that. Um, they are just beasts. All right. Um, also, I know we're not going to be able to talk our way out of every situation, but. We know the dragon's name. If we could talk to the guy in charge of the raid of the temple, the guy up here, we might be able to tell him something along the lines of uh, the dragon said, you need to stop focusing on the temple. It's You're not going to be able to get in. Something like that. Well, you're, you don't really look like cultists or mercenaries. Um so, but Karen knows some passphrases and hand signals. <laughs> you do, you do. Um, yeah, and you have, uh, you probably have some uh, cultist robes. I could just slip into those real quick. So I just imagine her tugging them on, patting her waistline, being like, ah, still got it. <laughs> <laughs> My mind went to the uh, first episode of Mandalorian this season. <laughs> Have not seen it, so oh, okay. I won't spoil yeah. it. I should watch that today. Didn't they fire the um the voice actor for the Mandalorian? I, I, don't, think so. I don't think so. I hope not. <laughs> Sounded like the same guy. All right, I can go if you want to try and talk. I can put on my cool little robe and go talk to this guy, but I don't think he's gonna listen to me. So, um uh, let's see here. When do you want to, uh, attempt this? Like, when do you, like, basically both groups are stationary, uh, except for the patrol. Um, 
when would you like to attempt this? Like, where do you want that second group of, or that third group of guys to be when you try to Down here? talk to this? This is the patrol? Um, I'd say yeah. probably, like, out of sight of the building so we can come from over here or from the road and, like, not be inside of them because I don't want the dragon wolves to see us. Okay. Um, so I think this is going to end in violence regardless. Sorry, what? I think this is going to end in violence regardless. They're not going to let us inside and let us back out with the people. If we fool them here, what does that accomplish? If we fool them here, we might be able to have enough time to get the people out of the building into the keep. But the the enemies are still here. They're going to pursue us. They're going to see this happening. They're walking around the building right now. I could ask them to go somewhere else. That's fair enough. If you could convince this group to go around the back and that we would go in the front, maybe. But even then... Just be prepared for the worst, I suppose. Stretches out, uh, ensuring his shields are buckled on each arm, limbering up. <laughs> if um, if you think attacking them would be better, we can do a sneak attack. I don't presume to know what's better, I just think it's going to end up that way, regardless of what we do. If that's the case, then I think we probably should just attack them, because that way we'll at least surprise them. Karen starts stripping out of the robe she was putting on. <laughs> to truly win a battle, <laughs> you have to defeat the mind of your enemy. Strike down their leader immediately, and I'm sure some of them will crumble and flee. That's a good point. Show them such a spectacle that they don't wish to stand and fight. Let's go get them. Was the uh, the leader, he was just like a humanoid, like a regular size yeah. person? Just a person. He's wearing blue robes. They look a little bit nicer than the... Uh... Yeah. Than the other cultists, uh, yeah. Cool, cool. Up, up north is some uh, guards and some kobolds. Sounds and like we have ourselves a plan. And pretty much all around you, you hear um, you hear like the sounds of combat and uh, and raiding is still going on. I could give you that link so that we can have a little ambience. Cool ambience. Um. Yuri's preference is probably going to be if to take this group up top by surprise because they're trying to get through the main door. The group back here is working on a fire, which will be a little slower, and these people are moving around here anyway. So they're all gonna come up this way, but if you can if we can smash these guys real quick. I think he's just gonna try to pounce on this guy and grab him and hold him as a hostage if nothing else. You know, we could like Oh, shoot, can I draw? And then maybe he'll be uh, more inclined to talk at that point. If we, like, drew a quick little line of oil, like, right here, we could make a barricade of fire. Ooh, I like that. That is a cool idea. I like that. There's already a fire right there. That sounds great. I love that. I could uh, switch to the frog or my giant toad, and that can actually swallow one of these. <laughs> <laughs> okay, new plan. Uh, Yuri will <laughs> grapple their leader and then feed him to you in front of him. Yes! In, in front of his guards. Actually, oh I, I support this. I'm all for it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Let's do it. The old frog and bog. It's a classic. The old frog and bog. Uh, I, I love that you have a name for the maneuver. It's awesome. <laughs> and there's also yeah. the hop and plop. <laughs> Required four more digestion. A lot of frog-related humor here. <laughs> All right, so you're gonna wait probably for these cultists to be like over here when the stuff starts hitting the fan, or maybe even into the smoke. So yeah, I think uh, probably when stuff starts up here, uh, you'll have three rounds of combat before they see what's going on. Ooh, that's generous and should be ample time to do something. Well, there's there's lots going on right now. Like that's um, fair. Um, yeah. So th 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 
there's there's raiding going on in different parts of the city. People are screaming and uh, and everything. Um, so let's see. All right, uh, go ahead and go ahead and drag yourselves into the uh, area. Which uh, which direction are we coming at them from? Like over here? Yeah, I, I like probably the northwest corner. How do I do that? Uh, pretty much by your name. Uh, okay. You click and hold on your name and yeah, drag yourself drag out on the. Oh, cool. Alrighty. Gotta zoom in. Wait, oh god, where's my time? There we go. You gotta drag your token out. That's what we're talking about. That's cool. Here, I, I, I got you. There you go. Thank you. Put yourself wherever you want to be. Behind people. <laughs> <laughs> Just hanging on to Ugg. <laughs> on his back, perhaps. Go for it. Master Blaster style. I feel like Karen, Karen's more of a, a whiny Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure we should be doing this? <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> All right. I'll lift this plane out of the swamp, please. So, um, so we've worked with Kobus before. So, have we seen him transform just before we actually do this? Oh, uh, you've recently made it to level two, and I think that's when you get your shape shifting ability, right? Yeah. Well, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, So I'll leave it up to him whether or not you've seen this before. <laughs> I'd say, yeah, I'd say you probably have. I mean, I didn't know if, if this has been something we'd uh, worked on in the past or like done before. I was kind of picturing that as, as a druid in the swamp, he just kind of casually transforms into a giant toad to kind of swim and just leisurely hang out. <laughs> nice. Okay, cool. Cool. All right, so it's probably going to take three of you to uh, launch the oil over there. If you're wanting to attack from this side. Um, Kobus, you transform into a toad. Uh, yes. And so one of you gets a, a surprise action if you're wanting to do anything. Uh, Yuri's goal is to immediately spring upon this guy and grapple him. Feed him to Kobus! <laughs> I would like that, so okay. that's, that's kind of the goal. So yeah, um, the, they're all pretty much distracted. The uh, the kobolds probably see the dragonborn, and they're like, hey, that's cool. Um, and so they don't really call attention to it. Um, but yeah, you just start moving with a purpose to the, uh, to the guy, and he looks up at you at the last second, and you get your grapple attack. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, I would like to use my inspiration on this. Oh, nice! And I think it's just uh, do. Is it a strength check or is it a an attack? Roll? I think it's athletics. Athletics, that's it. Or maybe it's an attack. For, I don't know how grappling works. Let's look it up real quick. Athletics. I think it's a contested roll, uh, where I roll athletics and they roll either athletics or acrobatics. Uh, if I succeed, then they're grappled and they. Basically can't move, but they can still act and stuff. That sounds good. Um, so you say I roll uh, either dexterity or strength? Uh, athletics or acrobatics. Okay, he doesn't have either one of those, so I'll just do a straight dexterity check. So he got a 12. Where did my... What is going on there? Woo! Yes! It would have been kind of embarrassing if the dragonborn couldn't grapple a human. I'm just so big. I mean, they're, they're slippery sometimes, you know? <laughs> He's got oil on him yeah, for some humans reason. humans with your oily skin. <laughs> Gross. I've lost my chat, so I need to log back in, I guess. Oh, no, okay. Uh, I'm guessing you succeeded. So why don't you I go got ahead. a 14. Nice. So go ahead yeah. and uh, describe what that looks like. He uh, He's sitting there. Um, directing, like, heave, heave, and, uh, uh, and then you walk up beside him, and what happens? 
I th- so uh, Yuri has the boots of striding and springing, uh, so he can leap great distances. So I think he leaps from out of sight and lands very nearby, uh, and then takes the last few steps with purpose as this guy turns to face him and just reaches out and uh, grabs him in an arm hold around his neck and is just sort of pulling him back tight, hostage style, um, blocking the front with his shield. Uh, and he, Yuri has the unarmed fighting style, which is one of the unearthed arcana styles that you're allowing me to use. Uh, so part of that is that I get to deal 1d4 damage whenever I start to grapple. Nice. So he takes Woo! 4 damage. As I wrench him by the neck closer. <clears throat> Very good. Yeah, he starts to say, What's the meaning? <laughs> And you start choking him out. Um, mm-hmm. All right, let's roll for initiative. I uh, I added a new initiative button, so you should be able to click your token and in the top left see. Uh, oh initiative. wow! Oh, oh that's a two! No! <laughs> oh no! Oh. I hope that added me to the turn order. It did. That's that's some neat automation. That was cool. Yeah, Kobus, eat him! <laughs> <laughs> Bro. 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 See. Oh, do I have to select my token first to do initiative? Uh, yes. you click on your token, and then in the top left by the arrow button, there should be a thing that says oh. initiative. Nice little button there. Ooh, nice. Not bad! Hey, you guys. Descending. Indeed. Well, I just got my hands full, literally. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, this guy is grappled, so I gotta look up what that does. I think it literally only reduces his speed to zero, so he can't yeah. move, but he should be able to still fully act and stuff. Yes. Okay, so he doesn't have like disadvantage when he's attacking you or whatever. Let's see here. Um, uh, a grappled creature's speed zero. It can't benefit from any bonus to speed. Uh, the condition ends if the grappler is incapacitated. It also ends if an effect removes the grappled creature from the reach of the grappler or grappling effect. It's like if somebody gets hurled away by Thunder Wave or something. So, yep, that's it. No no benefits aside from that, it looks like. Cool. He um, he uh, immediately pulls out his um, his uh, shock baton while you like got him around his neck, and he just like swings behind him and tries to hit you. Uh, since you have on metal armor, he has advantage on this attack. Oof. Yeah, that, that tracks. Oh, but you got him. He's uh, he's swinging wildly, but you're so tall that you're able to just keep him in a headlock, and he just he can't uh, he can't connect. We can't <clears throat> see your rolls, by the way. I'm you not sure if, that... if that's intentional or not. What? That's lame. <laughs> I, I trust believe you. you. Yeah. We were just letting you know, so you're not like, let me prove it to you! Oh. That's so lame. I want to fix that. I'm making a note to fix that. Okay. Yuri just like All swats right. his Who's hand up? away as he's flailing around. More a kobold! Some kobolds. Let's see. <clears throat> uh, we'll have one, like, he saw you leap out from everywhere, but now that you're attacking his cultists, he thinks, oh, you're a bad guy, so oh, he's gonna come up and try to attack you, too. <clears throat> Let's see. He will do dagger, and since he has an ally, he has advantage on this roll. Ooh. Sounds right. Six damage. Okay. Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Oops, Plus an now here. bundled together. The greatest stories and characters. Silence. I'm listening to the village raid destruction music, and when you said got an ad here, there was like a faint voice far in the distance that yeah. went, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Same! Uh, and That's then great. a couple of kobolds will move up uh, and attack. This one's just gonna wait to see what the heck happens. So this will not be at advantage on Ugg. 22 will likely hit, and 11 will probably miss. So I'll go ahead and mark some damage on Ugg. He took four damage. 
<laughs> he did it again. Yep. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Nice. All right, so uh, that's the kobold. Karen, what would you like to do? Uh, so we haven't lit the oil line, so uh, Karen's gonna start towards doing that. You we actually did. Made- oh, we did. Yeah, like the you, we started out the first uh, the first um, surprise round of combat. Three of you like threw the oil over there, so oh, okay. those things threw lobbed over bad. the edge and then just gotcha. lit up. Wonderful. Well, in that case, Karen's going <clears> to <throat> cast an Eldritch Blast at this fool attacking her friend. Do it. An eight. A d- okay, here's a question. Do you think she has advantage because uh, Uri's on the opposite side of her? Of the kobold mm-hmm. for this ranged attack. A ranged attack? Uh, well, I, I would say probably ordinarily no, but in this case, you did specifically say that he's facing me. So if he has his back to her, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I'd be cool with it. Yeah, obviously. If you want to give it to us, there's complaints there. Go ahead and uh, roll your damage. I would love to. Thank and we you. also have lucky, so you can re-roll. Three rolls per day, right? Holy crap. Nine force damage. Nine. Uh-huh. Blat! That is one dead kobold. Tell me what that looks like. Uh, I think she... Like, she's got to jump to be able to see over all the other heads, so I think it's just kind of a... A slap dashedly aimed eldritch blast that cracks into this dude's skull. Maybe slumps onto Yuri. <laughs> Having just stabbed me. Yeah. Hanging onto the knife and oh, tears no. down through my oh. <laughs> Take ten damage. Shake it off. <laughs> Kobus, you're up. Alright. I am going to jump. Ooh, I am already engaged. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm going to take the risk of the target of opportunity and jump over to one, two, three, four. I'm going to leap over to here. <laughs> nice. You want to take a swing at me? Since I moved out of that target. I, indeed I do. Are you in frog form right now? I am. Yeah, he does. So how big is a giant frog for context here? It's a giant toad. Um, it is, let's see, it's considered a large beast. So he's probably just like a big, fat, bullfrog looking dude. Um, large? Isn't that about as big as a horse? Yeah, he's probably about uh, that size. Dang. Oh, that's a big frog. <laughs> he's a big boy. He's got a little green stuff running down his nose, you know. Every <laughs> once in a while, his tongue comes out and wipes his eye. Nice. Just put this dead cobalt over there so you can be all big and frog-like. And intimidating. Oh my gosh. But, but yeah, as you as you jump over the cobalt, he runs his dagger down you, um, your, your underbelly, and you take five damage. Alrighty. Um, do I? I think I gotta give you giant toad. You have like the I, stats of a giant toad, right? Yeah, I, I have the uh, the shortcut popped up here. Um, here I'm go. not sure how. That... Thirty nine health. I'll wow. Put you back here. Bloop. And that thing does a lot of damage. Awesome. And you took five damage. I'll go ahead and add that. So I'm on board with just frog meta for combat. <laughs> oh, here. Like a very- game. How many things can we feed to the frog? <laughs> <laughs> I think it can only have one body consumed in it. Well, that's true. I mean, <laughs> nice. I love that dimension. Right, do, <laughs> do you want me to roll for the toad here? I like to have all the macros and stuff available. So yeah, yeah, I'll do the uh, the bite on the 
this guy right here. Let's see. I'll put this in all players' journals and... With the full attention of spitting him out to give over to the guy that's being grappled by Ignatius there. All right, so you are trying to bite one. The toe makes one bite attack against a medium or smaller target. And, okay. Here we go. Oh, god dang it. Woohoo! That does poison damage also. Yep. What the heck? No, there's, there's no way this kobold survives. <laughs> there's no way. Uh, nine damage or eight damage total. Nice. So yeah, if you want to swallow this kobold, you can. No, I think I'm gonna spit them out. I'm my my appetite is set on the cult leader. Right. I'm not gonna worry about that. Okay. And so yeah, you uh you waylay that guy. Man, everybody rolled either over a twenty or under a seven. <laughs> <laughs> Kylo, what would you like to do? Oh, fun. Okay, so is this cobalt here dead? Uh, no, this one's dead. Oh, I'm, I see. I'm sorry. I was a uh, I was attacking this guy here. Okay. This is the one that had that Karen had destroyed, right? Yeah, I attacked. Yeah. Okay, do, do, do. and he did. Alrighty. All right. Sorry, one second. I'm looking at my weapons. I have a dagger. I'm going to unsheath my dagger, step forward, and attack this kobold here. Do it. Oh, natural no. one yay <laughs> natural one is not gonna do it <laughs> yeah you, you move up to attack um this guy's eyes track the toes as it leaps over him and kills his buddy and uh and you move in to attack him but he just uh he hops back and parries it with his short sword All right, guard. Um, these three guards all have the uh, uh, the big log that they were using as a battering ram. Mm. They uh, so they have to drop that, get their swords out. They can't do anything, but this guy can come up and attack Yuri, and he'll get advantage because he has a friendly cobalt on the other side. Oh no! He's going to do a two-handed spear. So is that uh, is that stemming from the kobold's ability, or are we using flanking? Flanking. Okay, gotcha. Uh, will a sixteen hit your armor class? Uh, my AC is eighteen, so it will not. Nice. So yeah, he uh, he like runs over past his friends, and he just like shoves his uh, spear square into your chest, and your armor just completely absorbs the blow. You only take a half step back. And the uh, the cultist is like cursing him. You fool! You could have killed me. Um. And so that's the guards. Yuri, it's your turn. Excellent. Um. Feed that so, frog. Yeah, so <laughs> I can't I can't feed him to the frog, right? Because that it needs to be a giant toad's attack to consume him. Okay, yeah, mechanics-wise, yeah, that's how that works, but rule of cool, yes, you can feed him to the giant toad. Why couldn't <laughs> <Okay>. you? <laughs> yeah, I would like to use my turn to uh, pick him up. I don't know if it's an attack, I don't know if it's a throw, but yeah, I want to deposit this cult leader into my, my good friend, uh, Cobus Giant Frog. <laughs> 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 um, okay, so yeah, we are... Uh, Let's see, this toe makes one bite attack against a medium or swallowed target. It is grappled. If the attack hits, the target is swallowed and the grapple ends. So, okay. I, so, so I have him grappled currently. Sure. Um, so yeah, basically you can use your action for the giant toad to make an attack, I guess, to try and swallow him. Sounds good. Sounds can good. I uh, move him over to this yeah, space? Yeah, you, you can switch switcheroo. 
I don't wish uh, to move Yuri. I don't think he wants to provoke any opportunity attacks, but he wants to drag that guy no, closer. You're, you're so fine. That... Like, you can move here, and he can move here. Okay. All right, so now the giant toad gets an attack at advantage. Oh! That will hit, so he is swallowed. No, no. Toad, toad, toad! So I like to... Uh, so this... Um, the cultist leader that had been flailing with uh, the shock baton, Yuri just slaps his hand down and away uh, when he feels the the enormous impact shaking through the earth as Kobus lands beside him and spits out the kobold. <laughs> I think Yuri just takes a step back and pulls the cultist <laughs> backwards towards him, trips him over one foot, and then just sort of upends him into the air. <laughs> uh, oh, that's cool. Um, no. I would like um, to give you inspiration for that description. Oh, thank you. No. <laughs> I'm imagining like the cultist's feet are like still kicking out of the frog's mouth, so you just like use your shields to punch the feet in. <laughs> <laughs> My eyes are like looking in different directions while it's <laughs> completely. <laughs> Jeez. The target is grappled, escape DC 13 until this grapple ends. The target is restrained, but I think you just did exactly enough damage to knock him unconscious. Ooh. Nice. You do feel like a little spicy electro static baton that's rolling around in your gut. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, but the <laughs> you just did exactly enough damage to consume him. So I'm going to move him over here. You okay. have a dragon cultist in your gut. <laughs> We're going to have to take Kobus to the vet to get that baton out. He is being digested. Uh, if he shapeshifts back... He just loved him so much. <laughs> if he shapeshifts back into a dragon boar while there's something still inside of him, I how does would, that work? I think he'd spit it back out. Probably. Yeah. 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 So what I, we need is, uh, we need a bag of holding to somehow we need to replace his stomach with a bag of holding. That's an idea. <laughs> I'm so hungry. Um, <laughs> oh. So uh, we have uh, the kobolds are going. They just saw their dragon lord guy get eaten. Uh, I think this guy has seen enough, and he's gonna probably take one swipe at you and then run away who me so you get an attack of opportunity yeah both of you this one will be on cobus uh think that will hit you for four damage and this one will be on kyla all righty i am down to 30. will a 13 hit your armor class kyla mm, that sounds kind of pathetic no it won't excellent um and then they take off running um, you can get a free attack, but they're... Stab. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy with my nice. my lunch. I'm going to let him run away. <laughs> Go ahead and roll damage, Kyla. Bye. Just enough. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I just imagine the kobold running away, and she's like, She's mad that she missed the first time when she probably could have hit. Um, and she just throws her dagger at the kobold. And nice. And hits him right in the back. So this is round two. You have two more rounds before you'd have to deal with uh, the patrol. Let me go ahead and move the patrol over. All right. So, kobolds have gone. I'll go ahead and delete that. Uh, Karen, you're up. Let's see. Uh, Karen is going to move one, two, Excuse me. two, right here and try and blast this guy at the front of the... the they had the battering ram, right? Yeah, Trying they, to get they, in the just, door. they just dropped it on the ground and turned around and tried to help their, help their boss and... Uh, and then they just saw <laughs> Uri do a uh, suplex and drop him into the giant toad. <laughs> gotcha. Well, in that case, since they're not battering it anymore, I'll attack the one closest to my good friend, Yuri. 
with an Eldritch Blast. Do's it. Nice. I'm in favor of this. Ooh. Nice. Not bad. Do it. Yeah, foo. Carrots. Not bad. Day. Man, quit one shot all my guys. You guys are running like <laughs> monsters. <laughs> Listen, I roll so poorly in other games. I have to make up for it somehow. Now you're dead. Whatever, Lazarus. <laughs> <laughs> World of death. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> all right, Mr. Giant Toad, what would you like all to right. do? Uh, this kobold well, has fled, so I'll put him over in the... And the non-combatants. Cool. And now is is the leader? I know he's still being swallowed and stuff. Is he incapacitated? Is he done? Yeah, you 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 knocked him out. Like I, I assume you wanted to keep him for questioning, so you've done non-lethal damage. Okay, so if he's knocked out, I'll go ahead and let him spit back out. I have a question. You could just keep him in there. Well, I, if I do that, uh, he's going to continue to take 3d6 acid damage. <laughs> oh, no. Holy cow. Spe yeah. Literally being digested, yeah. Yeah, technically, he's supposed to take it on this turn, too, because it's the beginning of my turn. That's fine. You can spin him back out. Okay. Cool. Then I'm going to go and help out my buddy over here. Because of the the size of giant toad could you just like jump and land on two separate people at once i i could try that's up to Eck. that's rule of cool sounds like something you could do it, you, probably, yeah. <laughs> you probably won't do as much damage as your massive poisonous tongue but oh that's okay I'll, yeah that sounds fun let's do that I want to sit on those dudes. See, what I like here is that uh, we have a giant toad who can jump, and then we have Yuri who can also jump. <laughs> so you're yeah. just going to jump on everything. <laughs> Yuri, hop on! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, can you imagine the height you could get? Frogapult! <laughs> oh, my gosh. The Sorry, toad Toadapult. <laughs> okay, uh, I forgot to roll initiative to, for Ugg, so he's just been staring slack-jawed as the awesomeness <laughs> is going on. He knows he can't compete. Ooh, there you oh, go. He, really? he endeavors to. He's just so in awe of Kobus's graceful, beautiful, <laughs> graceful. giant toadness. Uh -huh. All right, I'll, I'll let him go after Kobus. So yeah, you leap up. Uh, give me a couple of attack rolls. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Is this... Uh, is this a situation where they might use dexterity to dodge his enormous landing? Uh, th this will be more like, um, if you want to, yeah, I can just roll a couple of dexterity saves uh, sure. for these guys. I don't have a horse. Race. I just, think, I just like the image of him, like his shadow descending on them. <laughs> I'm just going to do like a fully stretched out with my legs and belly flop on them. All right, we'll say you do a uh, d10 damage to each of them, and they can save for half. Dexterity save of 12. First right. one. Oh, God. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. They get slapped by a wart. Uh, I'll make you do... Um, <laughs> the first guy rolled a one, so I'll make you do a decent amount of damage to him. He'll take f six damage, we'll say. Oh, thank you. And he uh, barely manages to get out of the way. And this one uh, saves for half, so it takes none. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. But they, the, the, by the gods, and this silhouette of a frog <laughs> blocks out the moon. <laughs> <laughs> they both I'm leap to the sun. Blot out the sun. <laughs> nice. All right. Let's see what else is going on. Uh, do, do, do. Um, Ugg will go now. He's up a little bit, uh, so he'll move down and try to attack uh, one of these guards. <laughs> Great axe. That'll hit. He is not. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dang, guys. <laughs> sure. Dang. I feel I joined the right party here. <laughs> he just somewhat exploded, not totally, but a little <laughs> right, bit. Right? 
He didn't so, have to hop, but since everyone else was hopping, he wanted to be part of the club. So he uh, <laughs> he runs and leaps up off of the little pile stone fence and just double handed brings his axe down on that guard and uh, ends his life. They call us the battle bounders. <laughs> nice. I hope the it. last two guys will surrender instead of running away. Uh, if they make it that long. Kyla. Lovely. I think I'm going to send a firebolt at this guard. Okay. Fire. I was considering commanding them to surrender, but they're being kind of annoying, so... <laughs> Alright, roll damage. Ugh. Nice. Tell me what that looks like when this guy bursts into flames. <laughs> All right. After throwing her dagger and making that look cool, she just kind of casually steps over this fence if it's low enough to do that. Yeah. And she sees this guard recently jumping out of the way of this giant toad who is still laying on the ground after smashing somebody. And she just extends her arm and this ball of fire just shoots out of it and it hits the guard awesome. and he goes up in flames nice okay um yeah this guard gets to act he is literally surrounded by a bunch of people um, not people <laughs> a, a giant toad two two dragonborn and he uh he tosses his spear down on the ground i ain't getting paid enough for this uh and he just like raises his hands and backs away towards this uh oops towards this uh little corner here you do get an attack of opportunity if you want one giant toad man yeah i was thinking about it i i think i'll just put him yeah, I'll let him go. I'll let him go. All right. Well, he, he's not running because he doesn't feel like he could get away. You guys have been slinging magic and Eldritch Blasts and all kinds of other crazy stuff. Um, Technically, I have the intelligence of a giant toad, so... No, no, no. You have, you, you have your abilities. You're, you're still your own person. Oh, okay, cool. Your physical stats change, but your mental stats don't. Oh, nice. Sweet. So your, your intelligence, wisdom, and charisma stay the same. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll let him go. I'll let him go. So yeah, you still have the tail end of round two, Yuri, if you'd like to do anything. Um, I think he is going to come, now that all the enemies have been dispatched, he's going to come up here and try to rap on the door uh, and shout something to the people inside uh, and just say, um, Good citizens of Greenus, we are here to free you, but you must move quickly. And then he's going to position himself on this side. Give me a persuasion. Because maybe they didn't see what was going on. And we'll say, eh, what's a good failure state for this? Something that would be interesting. I, they are I, ready to attack you when you come in. No, I don't want them to carry. <laughs> uh, I mean, we could... So we finished this in turn two, right? This is turn number two? Yeah, this is turn so two. So there's supposed to be one more turn until they see us and come. Maybe if it's a failure, they just start coming immediately. Okay, well, we'll do that. <clears throat> okay. Or they hear me shout that or something like that. Um, so yeah, you have uh, you have 13, uh, DC 13, I think, or DC 12. What's that? Uh, make a perse or persuasion oh, test, DC 12. Oh, yeah. 22. Yeah, they, um, with, with something that good, uh, they were, they were watching that they've been, uh, fighting these kobolds that, uh, uh, that have been like sticking spears in and tossing a torch in every once in a while. And they see you come in and just completely demolish these guys. Um, so they were ready and they, hoist the big um the big bar that was barring the door the big wooden timber shove it off to the side and open up the the front gates 
Let nice. me get my notes here. I believe, meanwhile, Kyla's going to be staying near this guy to make sure he doesn't run away. I want to also keep him for questioning. Don't want him going off and warning anybody that we're uh, leading a, a large group of citizens to a keep. All right. Da, 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 da. Inside the church. Inside the church. Uh, about 20 town townsfolk are spread out inside the temple. Most are standing near windows or the main doors using makeshift weapons to keep the invaders at bay. Like some of them have like broken in half candelabras and uh, are like stabbing these crappy spears um, back at kobolds to keep them back. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, the man who let you in is a short, round man with white hair, beard, and bushy, wild eyebrows. He wears dull green robes and a well-worn brown linen cloak that is frayed and stained with mud at the hem. Oh, you're a sight for sore eyes. Welcome. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Um, but yeah, he, he's addressing Yuri. Mm. What, what, what do we do? Well met, good sir. Uh, we're here to take you to the keep. Gather everyone and start moving. We don't have much time. Yeah, he, uh, uh I was hoping you'd say that. And, like, um, uh, everybody abandons the, um, uh, the windows that they were guarding and, uh, basically files out. So you, you're able to get in and get out, but, uh, as you're making a way, making yourself, making good your escape. Um, hold on a second. Uh, as you're making good your escape, the 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 dragon drakes, uh, the the patrol that's doing the dragon drakes, uh, they they see you and they start barking out alarm and uh, and yelling, "Get him! Get him!" Um, so you start uh, trying to move your uh, your group of people away. Um, I'd like to do more of a um, like a, a skill challenge type of thing instead of uh, another round of combat. So we'll just kind of abstract some of this away. Cool. Um, pretty much you're going to need like a, uh, I'll say five successes in order to get away and if they get uh, uh, if you have four failures before then, then you're going to have to uh, do combat. Sounds good. All right. Um, did I tie this guy up, by the way? Could I have done that while they were talking? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. All right. Put him on the frog. <laughs> <laughs> right on the frog. All right. So uh, who's carrying the... Uh, who's carrying the dragon claw guy, if anyone? Uh, I can carry somebody. Okay. I cannot carry anyone <laughs> i can i can definitely carry i think Un can probably carry somebody too yeah so if you want to have like a cobalt a mercenary and the dragon claw guy then i think that's fine that sounds good right. one of each we got all of our bases covered. Oh, hey. Yay. Knock, out, yeah. knock out one of these uh cultists down here and we got the full set <laughs> why is that not working we can't question the drakes <laughs> no you cannot so yeah you um you start running down the street and uh, duck in between two buildings and make your way back to the river and start following the river back up. Um, meanwhile, the uh, the guards are, are chasing you, and uh, then they, they loose the dragon drakes to like charge into your group. Who would like to do something? I love doing things. Let's do it. I don't have a whole lot of spells. I think but uh, I'm happy to help. If if it becomes clear that they can't outstrip uh, the dragon drakes and there's going to be some sort of confrontation, uh, Yuri would probably pass off anybody he was holding temporarily to make sure he was the one standing at the back to at least take the brunt of the blow. Yeah. Shields akimbo, ready for the hit, poised to grab one and throw it. Yeah. So, so are you wanting to make a uh, skill roll, or are you just wanting to like? Do something like spend one of your uh, hit dice for um, so you, you've reduced some of your healing ability. Um, I think I would like to. Uh, could I use athletics in a defensive way to try sure. to throw them off course or knock them silly or something like that? Absolutely. Okay. 
Athletics go. 12. Let's see what the stats of this dragon dog are. Ooh, he's got a 13 armor class. Oh, no. Can I uh, drop the dude and stand next to Yuri to help him out? So yeah, we'll, we'll call that one failure. The uh, the ambush drake like jumps into the middle of the like y you hit it with your shield, but it just gets deflected into the group, and that mm -hmm. kind of skins sends people scattering. Um, so you have to like herd a few cats, and you lose a little bit of time trying to mm -hmm. trying to get these guys back in there. Makes sense. All right, I will make an maybe an animal handling check or I can't really think of anything charisma related I would do. So I guess I'll do an animal handling check to try and direct the dogs the dragon dogs away from the group like throw some rations out or something. Uh, you could probably use your uh, dragon scholar ability rolling arcana or something like that. Alright, I have proficiency in arcana. It's only a two though. So we will roll that. Oh, oh. Very nice. I feel bad for Ooh. saying it's only a two. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, sorry, I'm I'm updating the uh, session NPC document while. Oops. I will be right back while you guys are rolling. I need to uh, clean up some dishes near my desk and stuff. No. Cool. Be back Actually, in about five minutes really need to use the restroom if uh, I'm going to take a short recess if that's okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, we'll take a quick break during the chase scene. Alright, thank you. Sorry about that. I will be back also. Alright, so uh, right now we have one success and one failure. Who else would like to make this thing happen? So you have, oops, what the heck is that? Have we been aggressive towards these dragon dogs? I can't remember. Uh, Yuri punched one of them, and then uh, uh, Kaylee kind of scared them off. I, I picture her like running through a couple of draconic commands she suspects might work, um, and sense. and she stumbles across them. And these aren't trained enough to where they'll only listen to their master. They just hear it and just immediately do the thing. So gotcha. the, the dragon dogs have kind of, the dragon drakes have just sprinted off back towards the way they came. So we need five successes before we hit four failures. Is that it? Yep. Are nice. these roughly the size of like a, a mastiff, a large dog, or are they bigger? It's about the size of a wolf or something, yeah. Can I try to intimidate them with my large toadness? Sure. I'd be pretty intimidated. I'm going to just give like a, I'm going to jump back, hit the ground as hard as I can, and just go, just vibrate my body as much as I can. <laughs> cool. I'll color them in. Okay, yeah, you color them in. The bottom one is successes, and the top one is things. So yeah, go ahead and give me an intimidation roll. Already. Oh. No, oh, hold on a minute. Before you go, oh, let's see what their wisdom save is. Um. Yeah, that's enough. Wee hoo. Very nice. All right. So yeah, the um, we'll say that uh, Kyla like gave them the stay order, um, and then uh, they sit there. They just immediately sit down, and they're just like looking around, drool dripping down out of their fanged mouths. Um, and then you go, Burr! and they just start yelping these reptilian barks as they uh, bound away. Um, in the, in the forest, yeah, let's move this guy over here. In the forest, uh, you're, you're making your way back to where you know where the, the entrance to the keep is. Um, people have scattered a bit and they're spread out some, so that's a problem we need to deal with. And then, uh, 
also in the distance you see um, torchlight filtering in between the branches as uh, as a big group of people is chasing you. I have another idea for a skill check. Um, Kyla, since she was able to command the dogs once, she may tr do an intimidation check to see if she can uh, maybe able to figure out some more command words and control the dogs further. Just Look. kind of show her, like, assert her dominance, maybe? The, the dogs have uh, run off, so they're, ah, okay. they're, they're gone. Uh, so you said some some in our group are straggling along, like getting separated a little bit. Yeah, because a uh, one of the drakes jumped into the bit, like when Uri punched him, it uh, fell into the uh, it fell into the group, and then that just sent a lot of people scattering and, and fleeing for their lives. And gotcha. there's a, and we see torchlight off in the distance. Of... Yeah, the, the torchlight is kind of southeast and eastish, coming from the the temple. Evil doers. <laughs> Could Karen do perhaps a persuasion to try and round up uh, the people who are getting separated? Absolutely. And uh, I'd even give you advantage on this role because people want to listen to instructions. They are right now, their little lizard brains are just <laughs> acting <laughs> on pure instinct. I didn't know we had lizard folk in this town. Wonderful. <laughs> Not bad. Oh, no. I use Lucky to re-roll that. I have a uh, plus five in Persuasion. I, I might be able to help you with that roll. You don't have to accept that offer, but I, it's just an idea. Let's just let Karen roll. Uh, so can I use Lucky to re-roll that bad boy? Yep. Awesome. Good use. Thank you. It yeah. felt important. Oh, Ooh. I oh, yeah, There we go, baby! <laughs> Double Good job, Karen. Man, ah. I feel like we should take a picture of that. What a turnaround. <laughs> Double 20. Uh, go ahead and fill in two successes for that. Wow. Um, yeah, you're um, at first, like your, your little bitty mousy voice is just drowned by the drowned out by the chaos. But, but then uh, she makes it much louder with prestidigitation. Yeah, you, uh, you, you, you do the same thing that you did in the keep with the big booming voice and uh, basically give clear cut instructions, get back in the group, go this way, follow the dragonborn. We're making it to safety and they just funnel right back, uh, right back into uh, heading back to the, the secret passage. You guys are almost there. Um, We're making it guys. You're going to mm -hmm. make it. Yeah, the uh, the pursuing people are really falling behind. You've, uh, we'll say that you've you've traveled this way in the dark before, and you know which way to go, and you've <laughs> you've doused your light so that uh, it's hard to tell where where you guys have have shown up or where, where you guys have gone. Can I? Um, maybe this is a stretch. Can Yuri use his proficiency in history to tell the people an inspiring story as they make their <laughs> march back to the to keep spirits up and keep people moving forward? Listen, this one time there was a very big frog and we became friends. <laughs> It'd be more like uh, I just imagine they're all just jogging in a group and he's trying to stand near the front, just being like the march leader. Just like, you know, once a very long time ago there was a battle. And they sent a runner from the battle to announce that they had won the battle. And he ran so far that they named the length of the run after him. And it was called a marathon. <laughs> and we're not on a marathon, but we're almost there. Just keep keep moving. Yeah. <laughs> Can you hear Karen shout from the back of the group, Did that guy die? <laughs> yes, his heart exploded. It's very inspiring. Can you oh, feel God. your hearts exploding with the desire to live? <laughs> I don't know for a Go ahead and <laughs> go ahead and give me a history roll. <laughs> Love it. So nice. Yeah. So um, you tell <laughs> this uh, this inspirational um, this inspirational tale of of the the runner, and basically you're just telling people, I know you're tired. I know it's rough. Run like your life depends on it, because it does. And, uh, and, and people are motivated enough to where you, you make it back to the, uh, back to the tunnel. 
Um, Probably partially only that he he's talking, right? Like there is somebody talking, so for some reason it keeps them moving. Mm. Cool. Um, so yeah, you you make it back. You, uh, uh, I know we said that you might have to face somebody here, but uh, since you managed to get five successes with only one failure, um, I feel like uh, like you shouldn't have to fight anybody. Um, so yeah, you make it into the uh, tunnel. Uh, would you like to collapse the entrance or leave it open? Hmm. Should probably collapse it, right? Well, no, there's a gate though, isn't there? There is a gate, yeah. As as good measure, could I between the woods and the the gate, kind of every time I jump down, use my back feet to sort of cover the tracks of the people? That'd be really hard. I think I don't think that would work. Okay, um, but uh, you could possibly continue to lead the people like lead a second trail or something away from here yeah i'll do that um you might have a harder time getting back back into the keep but uh i think a druid with shape change would be able to do that cool cool idea all right so now so yeah, maybe we're uh, collapsing in. Um, so we can get back through the gate. Uh, we're able to lock the gate. If we leave the tunnel open, that means that the forces will probably find their way here eventually and then know about it. Yeah. Uh, if we collapse it now, it might make it harder to get back out, but then they won't know about it and it'll still be an option. So yep. maybe That's... we should. We could always bring more people from like the keep to yeah, dig it out. we got 20 more. Yeah. It'd take these guys like five minutes to dig it out. That'd be fine. They owe us that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd say we collapsed the tunnel. Alright, yeah. Good luck, Cobus. <laughs> <laughs> I got this. We'll see you on the other side, friend. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. It's funny every time. Every time. So yeah, you, you uh you make it up the tunnel. Um you you collapse the entrance and uh, uh earth loose earth and stones and everything kind of blocks it off uh to get back out is still possible but it would take uh it would take some effort and you make it uh you lock the gate behind you and people file in and 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 slowly but surely make their way back to the keep once you get back there the uh there's a there's a lever on this side that you pull to open up the secret passage and uh, Escobar had a couple of guards posted down here to, to lead people up and into the keep proper. You make your way up there. He is still healing some, uh, tending to wounded and things like that. And It's been an hour, hasn't it? It's probably been an hour, I'd say. <laughs> Aaron stays at the back of the group. She does not engage. <laughs> um... Yeah, but my mood. <laughs> you make it and uh, and as the people file into the the grounds of the keep, uh, you see families reuniting. Um, you see uh, just different people giving you meaningful looks and and that they're expressing their thanks. And uh, there's a there's a cheer when you when you guys emerge from the. Um, from the cellar and the guards take you up to see Escobert and you have a couple of prisoners with you. Um, Including the one intelligent guard. <laughs> well, Yuri will be holding one of the prisoners over, draped over his shoulder and uh, when they emerge into thunderous applause he puts both of his hands up in acceptance and you know seems to be uh, an old hat at this sort of maneuver. So do you just like, like drop the guy while you're like, <laughs> does he just fall off oh, your no, shoulder he... when you're doing it? <laughs> I think he tries to shrug it in such a way that he can keep him there while also holding his arms out. All right, all right. I feel like when they come out of the the underground and people start cheering, Karen leans over to Kyla and's like, they normally make a different kind of sound when I show up in a town. This is a real nice change. <laughs> <laughs> 
I like that implies she's still well known enough to be reviled. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> Boo. Boo, you suck. Just mean looks. People clutching their purse. Um, yeah, so that's cool. Uh, yeah, and Escobert uh, uh, takes you back into the, the planning room. You don't see the governor right this second. Um, but he says, yeah, tell me. Tell me what happened. Yuri looks to Kyla. Oh, I was drinking tea. Okay. <laughs> right. What kind of tea? So, uh, lemon tea. Ooh. All right. So, uh, basically, we left the tunnel. It The entrance was effectively destroyed, but we collapsed it when we came back in, so it shouldn't be seen. Um, we went over to the temple, there were some dog dragons, that was interesting. Uh, we also took the apparent commander of that patrol captive, they were trying to use a battering ram against the temple, but we got everybody out safely. Um, there were a few uh, other kobolds and raiders still down there, but for the most part, we dealt with them. Excellent, uh, excellent work. He, um, he, he directs guards to take the uh, prisoners and put them in, in secure cells in the keep. And, um, and he says, I, I, I can't thank you enough. You're, uh, you're heroes in my eyes and uh, probably to theirs as well. Well, just what? don't forget who was here when you needed them. Wouldn't dream of it, lad. Uh, but the night's still going to be a long one. Uh, but if you if you want to rest, uh, you've definitely earned it. And uh, he directs one of the one of the guards to help you to comfortable rooms where you can definitely get a short rest and possibly a long rest. Nice. And um, if you want to, you can go ahead and heal up. Uh, we'll say they spend some healing to top everybody off. And you can take your short rest before other stuff happens, unless there's other things you want to do before you take your short rest. rest. Do we get uh, spell slots back for short rest? Nope. That's a, long, that's a long rest type uh, of thing. Warlock does. <laughs> nice. Sorcerers. Love warlocks. Paladin also does not. I haven't spent any spell slots yet, thankfully. But I do get my breath weapon. Woo! Nice. <clears throat> so yeah, it's um, at first it's a little bit hard to get to sleep, but uh, you guys have been in a few fights and you're suffering a little bit of adrenaline fatigue, so you can definitely doze off if you need to. Was there anything else you wanted to do besides the short rest? Stay um, away from the mayor. Yep. Yeah, can we can we do any kind of group minor information gathering to see if there's anything useful they might be able to tell us about the area that we're planning on going to, to the southeast? Uh, yeah, that's, um... Even if it's just, like, terrain or the type of creatures that exist in the wilderness, or... Yeah, um... Wilderness creatures are pretty much what you would normally find in, like, rolling hills light forest, uh, that sort of thing. So you might run into a wolf or a bear or something like that. Um, there's not really uh, monsters other than the occasional kobold, but this is like, this has been an infestation of kobolds. They've been breeding like rabbits and, and uh, recruited by the cults so uh mostly what you would deal with would be bandits or that sort of thing the uh do you think you've been there Allie, with karen oh uh, i think she might have been okay if she's been in the area before yeah you've probably looked at it from a distance just to 
kind of get there, but you weren't sure how tight security was or anything like that? That sounds good to me. Um, so yeah, f from a distance to where this, um, where this place is, where they were gathering a whole bunch of people, there was this, uh, I could just take you to a quick map peek. It's a very good dragon. Called this the Raider Camp. Did you do that dragon? Yeah, it was me. <laughs> oh, it looked owlish. Listen, I can only kind of draw one shape. That's all I got. So yeah, there's this huge um, kind of culvert of a cliff face. Um, and you saw lots of tents and lots of different uh, people, different robed cultists. The majority of them were like blue and black robes. Uh, but you also saw a big contingent of mercenaries and uh, a whole bunch of kobolds. Um, and so, yeah, you, you know that there's uh, somewhere to the southeast, um, maybe a day or two's walk from here, is the uh, is this raider's camp. And you're thinking that this is probably also the hatchery. Karen would fill the group in about this and the general layout and stuff, distance, travel time. She's like, it's a day or two on foot, but probably faster if we get some horses. I don't know if we'll be able to get any horses through that passageway. Well, on the road, sometimes there are people who have horses, and then you can be like, hey, give me that horse. <laughs> and they just give it to you. Sometimes. Hmm. Something seems off about that. I don't think so. That's very nice of them. <laughs> Yeah, some people are real, real nice. Yeah, when you make your voice all booming and intimidating like a god. <laughs> Don't even have to assault them, that's great. It's really my preferred method of horse acquisition. <laughs> <laughs> Put that on a mug. <laughs> Uh, was, was that the type of information you wanted, Doug? Or is there anything else you wanted to ask? Yeah, I didn't. I, didn't uh, I don't think either Doug nor Yuri was looking for anything more pointed. It was okay. mostly just wouldn't want to stumble out into an area where there's like a well known, like, oh, wait, clearly that's the poisonous gas swamp. So like, <laughs> you, <go over> there, <laughs> you fool. Like, I don't want to have egg and poison on my face. Uh. Right. All right. Feel free to reposition this amazing drawing of a dragon as you see fit. <laughs> I think right Tis there is beautiful. Fine. I love the dragon. He's, he's not that close to the keep, but uh, yeah, he's still flying around a little bit. Um, okay. Is there anything else you wanted to do? Uh, probably not. Okay. Karen's pretty, she's pretty well good to go. Yeah, I think uh, if they're getting a rest and recuperating a little bit, then their next step is to go find that egg before too much more time passes. Okay. And they will likely need some people to assist them in digging their way out, unless there's a better means of conveyance. All right. Well, maybe, um... maybe when I was sneaking around the, the village, I'll, if I see any scorch marks or ruined landscapes, I'll try to help bloom the flowers back up. Cool. Yeah, there's uh most of the uh you see most of the lightning strikes has hit the hard packed earth of different roads, so it's not really damaging the uh the nature very much. Um Sweet. but there are little divots at the intersections and um just multiple lightning strikes in the area. You do see the uh uh the dragon wheeling around lazily overhead. And uh, it does keep an eye on you. You can tell it's watching you from time to time, but it doesn't inflict its dragon fear on you. It just tends to let you do whatever it is you're doing. Yeah, it just waves. Hi. Yep. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you make it back. Uh, you will be able to make it back into the keep either from uh, some sort of wild shape coolness or whatever, and, and you can grab a short rest if you need it. Cool. Wonderful. 
All right. Um, as the evening winds down, um, let's see. Let me get my notes here. I love the music with the progression of the drawing. <laughs> this is <laughs> great. Nice. Where's the tag on missions? Is it you, Ellie? No. <laughs> like how even uh, with one hand on a trackpad, you're still drawing better than I am with a mouse and my dominant hand. <laughs> I like that we got him in profile now. I don't know how to draw dragon bodies. He's just jacked. I want to join the club. Just a ripped dragon. Please do, yeah. Oops. With a very tiny hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, that just means that uh, the perspective is skewed, right? So it's like That's a top. Right. Right. Maybe he has a really long neck that we can't see very Maybe. well. Putting up his dukes. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Is that uh, is that the half dragon there? Who drew that? Huh? Who's who drew that? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Convincing. I'm gonna have to take away the map right privileges from this session. <laughs> uh, Sorry, I set this in motion. Can't right. help but feel responsible. So after. Um, you don't sleep through the night. Uh, it's kind of restless. You, you get your short rest, and then you're you're just back awake. Um, and the and the night progresses a little further, and uh, but eventually you see wagons and things leaving the town, along with uh, many of the troops and uh, cultists and and kobolds. And. Uh, on the outside of the wall, though, a, uh, from the darkness, a creature strides into the dim light of the dying fires around the keep. Although it is shaped roughly like a human, it is at least seven feet tall. Its skin is covered in blue scales. Its fingers bear wicked claws, and its face has the muzzle and reptilian eyes of a dragon. The creature stops about 80 yards from the main gate. They prod four human prisoners into the dim light. You can make out a woman, a teenage boy in a blood-soaked tunic, and two children. Then the half-dragon creature hails the keep. Defenders of Greenest, this has been a successful night, and I am feeling generous. Do you see these four pitiful, useless prisoners? We have no need for them, so I will trade them back to you. Send out your best warrior to fight me, and you can have these four in exchange. And he uh, he stands there proudly, uh, towering over the other people. He's at least seven feet tall. Oh, geez. Is this the guy Karen knows? Yes. Oh, no. Is this the guy that stabbed Cliff? Yes. Oh, Is this no. the guy that you fought before? And That's a different game. <laughs> oh, okay. Yuri uh, yes. immediately volunteers so oh, yes. to fight this chump who killed Cliff in front of them. I think Karen shakes whatever bit of him that she can reach at her height and says, yeah, I want to fight him. He, I saw him kill like eight guys at the same time. You're saying I'm not a formidable opponent myself. Eight guys at the same time. <laughs> I Cracks his neck, rolls his shoulders a little bit. <laughs> they, uh... Bangs and shoots together in front of him. It's not that I don't think you're a wonderful fighter, Yuri. It's it's just that this is a half dragon, and those can be more powerful than dragonborn, uh, typically. Nods sagely and says, "Yes, perhaps I should go fight him." Oh no, that's. I'm saying there may be other ways to negotiate because dragons love treasure, and I'm sure he loves treasure too. 
I think the treasure he loves the most is the skulls of his enemies <laughs> to use as goblets. That's fair. Escobar sees like your your group talking back and forth, uh, and uh, actually, it's probably the governor that that comes up and talks to you. Um, he looks at Karen just askance for a second. She um, smiles. <laughs> He's like, thought we were friends, but we're not friends. He's not 100% sure what's going on. But other people are just kind of staring to the group because they've been like the ones going out and doing things and craziness. Um, one of the guards also volunteers and says, that's my wife out there. I'll go. No, don't worry. We'll get her back for you. I understand the honor you feel to put yourself forward, and I do not wish to deny you that. However, I do feel my own chances are better. Uh, yeah, he's um, he's just a militia guard. He's like, uh, he does this on the weekends. <laughs> um, he, he's definitely not a well-trained fighter. You definitely have a better chance, but uh, according to Miss Karen, that chance is really slim. But, uh, Better that I should die heroically than this fool. Uh, my, like, I'm going to be real. We're friends here, and I don't want to like bury you today. Because hmm. I'm I not going to hold that thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey. God. I hear it like... Cyanrath uh, hears the laughter and says, What say you? Send a champion out or I will kill these. He's just standing by himself? Worthless pink things. Uh, no, there's a... We're deciding! Uh, there's a... Uh, I know he's got the prisoners, but... There's prisoners sure. and then there's also like a bunch of kobolds that are like surrounding the prisoners. They all have spears on them. Okay. And the uh, the mo the mother is like clutching at the at the children. I was thinking that we could let Yuri do the fight to fight, and then have like the rest of us like in a half circle, and just basically cheat. <laughs> that sounds good. Karen likes that plan. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, but something on me. <laughs> if, if they see us cheating, they'll probably just kill the prisoners and. That's true. That's we kill them first. Well, so he said that if we send somebody out, he'll let them go. So I yeah. think Yuri can probably argue that you got to let them go, and right then now. I'll fight you. Okay. Yeah, then, you know, at that point, maybe he can just jump away. Like he can yeah. jump right far. So I feel I so it. bad sending Yuri in to do this. I'm sorry, Yuri wants this. I mean, Yuri is all about <laughs> glory and renown. So even if he fails here, he knows that people will, will remember it and remember him. I don't. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna let Yuri die. I, I certainly wouldn't. I mean, he's a good guy. He's prepared. Yeah. yeah. I don't think. Uh, I don't think my druid is too worried about honor of battle. He's more concerned about keeping. <laughs> <it alive. laughs> sure. All right. You get him to release the prisoners before the fight, and then if it looks like it's going bad, we'll just kill them together. Well, I love it. It sounds dishonorable at surface value, but I... But so is attacking a whole town in the middle of the night with a big old dragon, Your so... point stands. If you like you, we can let you have a fair fight at it, but if it looks like you're going to lose, you know, we'll, we'll step in. The story is always better than the reality, friend. What I, I wish to live. Um... Can he uh, request that Ia cast something useful on him before he goes out? Uh, She's our... Sure, she'll spend a spell slot for Bless. Bless. Can yes. he request Shield of Faith? Uh, Mage Armor? She doesn't have that prepared right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, Bless lasts, what, like a minute? Yeah. I, I mean, if, if she's willing to give him anything, I think that, that'll be helpful. I think I can only cast Mage Armor on myself. Yeah, that's Mage my Armor uh, gives you a higher base armor class, but it, mm -hmm. my armor is stronger than it. Gotcha. Ah, uh, I see. 
I do there's have, little that would make me tankier than I already am. So I, I do have uh, a cantrip that I can give you. It's not, I don't know if it's going to do much good, but it's resistance. And what that does is that gives you a D4 on any saving throws that you need to do. I'll take it. Resistance. Resistance. Viva All right. So yeah, I think uh, I think Yuri prepares to exit the keep uh, in whichever way is best. Even you know he can leap from the battlements if he has to because of his his boots or his sandals rather. Uh, you can that do that, cool? or you can shimmy down a rope, or you can do whatever you want, sir. I think uh, for the drama for of it. full drama, yeah, he <laughs> he would like to leap forward from the battlements to land with a thud on the ground and the three point pose. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, rise and take strides out onto the field to address this blue half dragon. Cool. So, I think we're on the right place. Just I don't think a battle mat's really important right here, but. Sure, that's fine. Um, and if I need to put out the um, the kobolds, um, then I then I will. Uh, but for now, it looks like they're going to let you have your honorable fight. So yeah, you leap down off of the uh, you leap down off of the battlements and stride into the uh, the brightly lit circle. Um, and uh when when you when you do that he he smirks in appreciation and kind of good i was hoping i'd get to uh have a little fight he um he draws his uh big two-handed sword and you still see that the the tip is still bloody uh wait does he have a two-handed sword what is it I don't know. Yeah, he has a a, a large great sword. All right. Yeah, uh, Yuri takes sure steps out onto the field until there's a smaller expanse separating them, uh, taking a moment to size up his opponent uh, before banging his shields together again, uh, taking a wide stance with. Arms flexed out to the side, shields at the ready. He has the uh, the Greek style uh, armor that ends in sort of a battle skirt. Nice. Um, and uh, just ready. And you said you wanted to ask him to release the prisoners first. Yeah, I think he will say, "I am Ignatius Yuri, and I accept your honorable challenge. But you will release these prisoners prior to our duel." He sucks his teeth. I will release the children, but to make sure there's no funny business, we keep the woman. And um, sorry, you have my word. She will be released after I kill you. Mm. I think uh, Yuri considers this uh, and knows he really has no room to bargain here whatsoever. So. That's probably a better deal than he would have gotten. Very well. Release them. Um, he calls back over his shoulder in the Draconic. And, what does he say? Um, you're, like, too, you're too far away to hear it, but uh, after he's done, the oh wait, you speak it too. You're a dag of Dragonborn. Um, yeah, that's why. I was so uh, yeah, he uh, he's basically just telling them to release the release the children. And uh, nice. the um, and then he also says, um, if he somehow manages to defeat me, release the woman as well. And uh, and it looks like the kobolds all nod in agreement. The children move away from you. The oldest of the uh, the oldest of the boys makes eye contact with you on the way by. And uh, he's just like he's he's tearing up. And he just continues walking past you in silence. Yuri gives him a, a craggy smile and a wink of one eye as they pass. <laughs> Not to give him a boost of confidence. And he uh, he turns to the blue dra or the blue half dragon, and he says, 
Strange that there would be honor to be found among brigands and blackguards. What is your name? I should like to know the name of the person I'm about to kill. I am Ignatius Yuri, a name you would do well to remember. I'll make sure it's on your tombstone. And he, uh, uh, he raises up his uh, blade to attack. Let's roll for initiative. Go, uh, you got this. You got this. Yes. Ooh, seven. Come on, Yuri. You can do it, Yuri. No! <laughs> oh. <laughs> a picture of in the background banging on his drum as this is going Should on. Should have spent my, uh, my inspiration. This will be fun. This will be fun. All right. So, yeah, he moves. Um, after his little quip, he, uh, he charges forward and swipes down at you with his great sword. Please miss horribly. Big whiff. Will a 22 hit? It will. My AC is 18. Take 12 slashing damage. Oof. Oh, oh my god. That's half of my health. Oh my god. <laughs> this will be fun. Oh no. Alright. Okay. Uh, so yeah, he, he just moves up uh, to engage you. Whack! And uh, you, you move up your shields to parry but uh he swings it back around and as your as both your shields are up over your head he uh does a feint and cuts it across the the front of your chest mm. he uh stumbles backwards with the force of the blow the metal grinding on metal creating that humming sound in the air and then uh let's see Yuri is, I, I think with the force of that blow, he's sort of understanding that this is not going to be a long fight. Uh, I would like to use a bonus action to cast Thunder Smite on myself. Nice. Uh, which, I, I didn't mean to roll anything there, whoops. I was trying to post the stuff so that people could see That's it. That's fine. There we go. So I cast it on myself, uh, and then he is going to just try to haymaker this guy. Uh, and I'm going to use my inspiration on this attack. It's probably a good use. And hope, that, uh, hope that this hits. Uh, unarmed strike. Oh, that's damage, is it? Oh no, that's the actual to hit roll, isn't it? That is uh, 7 oh. out of 10. Would you like uh, to use one of your lucky points to... Yes, uh, I would. Absolutely, I would. I forgot I had those. Oh, no. What? Does it? So when I use lucky, does it mean I have advantage on that roll again? It, or does it... it you you re-roll it. So if you spent inspiration, then yes, I would let you uh, keep it. So that will I, hit. Yes, thank God. Okay, uh, so with this hit, I get to deal that thunder smite damage... Uh, and I'm going to use my Divine Smite ability as well. That's not lightning damage, right? That's thunder damage. Okay. I gotta uh, look at Cyan Rass. Okay. Uh, Probably resistant to lightning damage? Yeah, he's resistant to lightning damage. Okay, so I'm going to roll my unarmed damage, which is five. Uh, I'm going to roll my Thunder Smite damage. Is three bad? Oh boy! So bad! Oh no! <laughs> so bad! Is this uh, how and he won your arena? Divine smite damage, which is nine. Okay, so seventeen damage. Seventeen damage. Uh, he needs to make a DC thirteen. What is it a uh, strength save or be pushed ten feet away and knocked prone? Ooh, we got a 16. Damn. Okay, so uh, I think with the force of the blow, uh, Yuri is staggered back. Can you also uh, use Lucky to uh, make someone else reroll something? Uh, I don't think so. Let me see. I think it's all, 
I think it's only your own stuff. But if I can, then yes, I would love that. You can also spend one luck point. Okay, you choose. Whenever you make an attack roll, you can also use it when someone else makes an attack roll. Uh, nope, okay. Looks like if if someone's attacking you or if you're attacking them, or I'll yeah. also let you, let it fly for other things. All right. I mean, if I can spend a luck point to make him re-roll the save and get knocked back, that'd be fun. But <laughs> uh, I'll leave it up to you. If you want to, you go right ahead. Uh, I think for dramatic effect, I would like to make him re-roll that and see if I can... I know it's not going to make a difference in the fight, but I like the idea that he gets one good punch in. Enough to make that mm. single blood run out of his nostril nice you got a uh got a seven and a nine so keeping the nice. seven here so yeah you uh... okay so the weapon rings with thunder that is audible within 300 feet uh the creature is tossed 10 feet away and knocked prone so the way i see it uh yuri reels from the blow he just took uh, grinds his feet into the ground, sprints forward, and does like a leaping punch with his shield and just hits this guy squarely in the face with all the power he can muster in a single blow to throw him backwards. Yeah, you, you, you give him your all. Uh, you ring his bell pretty good, and he um, he gets launched backwards and, uh, and lands on his back. The kobolds, like, gasp out and... <gasps> Like this has, that's not how it's supposed to go. Um and uh he looks up at you, lightning crackling in his teeth. And uh and so that was your turn, it's his turn. Uh he stands back up. Would you like to move away or anything? Um because if you move just like ten feet away, then he can't uh move and attack you. Yeah, I think uh, from that, let's see. He'll shuffle. Yeah, he'd like to shuffle just out of range, wherever that would be. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I suggest, this is just a suggestion, moving 30 feet away, I believe that's how far the half-dragon breath weapon can reach. I don't know <laughs> if I'm remembering that correctly or not, but... He'll move uh, far enough away that he won't be able to close the distance with movement, at least by default. So wherever you'd like me to be, maybe here. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, he... um. It, uh, he's not using his breath weapon yet. He wanted this to be a martial thing, but yeah, you you uh, you knock him on his ass, and he just he seems real put out about it. <laughs> so yeah, he yeah. Um, he stands back up and charges at you, uh, doing a, a double move just to close the distance and be back in melee with you. It's your turn. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, well, then I'll just put him back here for purposes of that. Um, that was literally all of his abilities, or all of his spells and stuff. <laughs> uh, I think he's gonna try to grapple him. He's gonna go for that grapple. Alright. Probably not gonna work in his favor, but 15. And then I have to roll athletics, uh, or... Or acrobatics, whichever is better for him. I got an eight. So he is grappled and he takes a little bit of damage, right? It's one D four, two damage. And uh, I think after Yuri had knocked him down and he watched him get back up, he was still just standing in his ready position and says, um, there will always be someone smaller who's ready to knock you off your feet. Nice. All right. Uh, so yeah. And he, uh, he charges up and then you, um, you grip him by the uh well, where do you grab him by like the waist or something the horn yeah, I, think, uh, I think as he charges in um yuri sidesteps and does a, a move where he he tries to grab at one of his arms and wrenches behind the shoulder to just pull him down into an arm lock and keep him off balance gotcha. and try to stay away from the sword. cool so yeah um so yeah you uh you get a hold of him uh Olay and he uh charges past you a little bit and you grab his arm. He uh he swings back with his uh two handed sword, just one handed. Tries to smack you. What you got? Oh god dang. 
I got a 21. Oh, good. Uh, take 10 slashing damage. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm so scared. How's your health doing? I am at 2 out of 24. Oh, good! But the good You're news doing is there, great. Are any, there are no wound penalties. He's yeah. still standing. <laughs> I'm going to use his action surge so he gets one more attack. Oh, there it is. <laughs> That's fine. Go ahead. Let's see. Oh, 22. Do it. That'll do it. All right. And then he does uh, six slashing damage. No oh, way he didn't go unconscious from that. Oh, my lord. All right. All is right. he planning to kill Yuri or just knock him unconscious like he is? He said he was going to kill me, so he's yeah. probably going to kill me. Let's see uh, what he said. Yeah, okay. let's, let's see what happens. Um, okay. Because I'm prepared to risk my life to stop that, or Kyla's yeah. life to stop that, just to uh, try to get him to not kill Yuri. I'm waiting at the gate, ready to run out with cure wounds here. <laughs> Aaron is on his shoulders, ready to be a ballista. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, like the the fight is um, is over pretty quickly. Uh, they exchange a few blows. Yuri knocks him on his feet. He gets back up, and they tangle again. And it's just two quick swipes, and um, and Yuri goes down. Uh, and he looks up, wipes the blood off of his mouth. Um, he says, Your champion fought well, but he was defeated. This town is pathetic. And then he takes a sword and stabs Yuri one more time. And if you want, Yuri, you can get a cool scar out of this. That's up to you. Oh, absolutely. And, Please. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can uh, you can tell me where that scar is. So, like, he, uh, he sticks you one more time. It's like... Come, retrieve the fallen body of your champion. And he turns his back to the keep and walks off. The the woman uh, comes down. Uh, they release her. And the kobolds uh, like poke her with the spear as she leaves. Uh, and she she makes it to Yuri to, to like help try to bandage his wounds and stuff. He's probably far too big for this woman to even attempt to move by herself. <laughs> yes, yeah, like, <laughs> like dragging his head like he's a sack in the dirt. Oh, yeah, Kayla's gonna gonna go out there as well. Either climb down a rope from the wall. She doesn't want to open the gates while there's kobolds, but yeah. she's definitely gonna run out there. Yeah, there um there are like uh, some rope ladders that they they retrieve for you it takes a little bit of time but it looks like the kobolds and the uh the the pretty much all the troops surrounding the castle are just leaving at this point um another thing that's absent is you don't see the dragon that was flying around uh anymore uh he must have stopped circling sometime when you you all were sleeping i'm gonna immediately run to ignatius and do some curing Cool. Um, I, th I think the scar. What if he? Uh, what if he did a slash across the face that uh, took off part of one of his frills? Ooh, ooh nice. Carves down. Like the whole party just goes ooh. <laughs> I, I feel like it needs to be a visible scar to have impact yeah. or to reflect his self-image in some way. To be a visible stain of his failure. That's really cool. Uh, you shouldn't feel like it's a stain of your failure. This fight was like very, very one-sided for a single oh, as, level. As a character. player, I fully understand that. And I think Yuri does to some extent as well. But, you know, Yuri's whole thing is glory and renown. So this is all part of the legend of Yuri. That was pretty epic. That was pretty epic. He comes out the other side. He was almost a foot. <laughs> 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 but yeah, you... Uh, they they lower the the ladder down, um, and you start climbing down, and uh, and everybody makes it to your side. She's she's managed to stem the flow of bleeding, and he doesn't, uh, and so he doesn't bleed out. You, you you get over to him and put some healing into him, and he uh, he you wake back up, like the side of your face where um your frill is broken just feels weird numb and tingly um and uh and but your friends are all all around you 
coughs up blood, just stays flat on his back looking around at all of you. Karen, just, like, jiggles. Am, your am I dead? <laughs> no, you, you don't. Well. You should have been, though. He left you. Ugh. He falls back, clap, knocks his head against the ground. Why didn't he kill me? That's a great question. I don't know. I know he's crazy. No. Did he leave the woman? Yeah, everybody is safe. Go ahead and take inspiration for asking that question. Oh, thank you. I think uh, yeah, you're in, uh, very confused because uh, the, he he had said beforehand that he was not going to release the woman unless he won. So the fact that he left the woman, I think Yuri is now a little bit more confused about no, no, the no, purpose it, of the... Uh, is Yuri confused that he lost? <laughs> no, Yuri understands that he lost. Uh, Yuri is confused as to why the half-dragon would allow the woman to leave when it seemed like part of the condition was that he wouldn't release her unless Yuri won. No, no, no. It, like, I thought, I thought that's what said before. No, it, it was just the fight. Like he wanted, a, he wanted a good fight. You gave it to him, and uh, gotcha. he, he did like finish you off half-heartedly. He just stuck you one more time. Gotcha. And, and then, uh, and then he left, and like you reach up to the to the side of your face and feel like that that missing swoop frill frill. Yeah, comes away scarlet with his own blood, and his clawed hand clenches into a fist. So he tries to sit up a little bit more. I, I think he uh, maybe looks over at Karen once sheepishly and then avoids her gaze. Let's uh, go back into keep, maybe. Yes. Unless you want to kick his ass for you. No ug. <laughs> <laughs> Trusty's gone now, anyway. Yeah, he's gone. Ugh. So yeah, uh, Cobus, for your help. Yeah, Cobus and Ugg help you to your feet and uh, start. Limping back into the castle. Oof, yeah, he will. He will certainly allow Ugg to help him. It was he a feels... brave effort, my friend. Ugh! Did he? Did he look wounded? Did I almost get him? There is I... totally some blood dripping out of his nose, man. You, you did go almost got him, Yuri. You were so close. Uh... Mm, he has sort of a, an addled smile on his face. Hey, and you, you make it back in, and. Uh... Uh, again, like the guard that was willing to go out there and throw his life away. Um, he's hugging his weeping wife. His children are, they're just all in one big hug pile. And, uh, and he looks up and says, I, I can't thank you enough. I'll never be able to repay this. And, um, mm -hmm. and, uh, the, the mood is somber, but, uh, very grateful, uh, from just different people standing around. Yeah, we're great. I think people he, just uh, can't thank us enough. He like climbs his head to the man and his family and says, "Be well and live well." He he nods and solemnly. So says Ignatius Yuri. He's <laughs> got to get his brand. Got to name drop <laughs> that. Got to get the brand out there. <laughs> I'm going right. to start trying to start a chant. Yuri. Yuri. Yuri does. No, um, I think that could, uh, I think that would definitely catch on at this point. Um, Karen makes her voice louder to chant over everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right. Um, and I think we went through that a little bit faster than I was expecting, but I think this is a good spot to call this, unless there's anything else you're wanting to do before stopping the stream. Obviously, I have to cast Charm Person on the mayor again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. We are friends. That's right. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Where was I? Where's my head at? Now I remember. I remember. <laughs> I remember you. Karen, buddy. Pow. <laughs> she does that thing. Like pretend to punch each other's stomachs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice. 
With well, your I permission, thought... I, I healed uh, Doug for nine points. Oh my, thank you. I will cherish those points. Yeah, you're going to get a long rest in and everybody will get all their stuff back next time. Sweet. Sweet. And cool. we will also level up to level three. Oh! Oh, wow. I think uh, for Yuri's purposes of taking his oath, or finally having that oath, it was this moment of uh, knowing he made a difference in uh, taking a stand and getting his name out there. The these grand gestures are paying off for him. Absolutely. So he knows this is... Very brave. Yeah, I need to look up some... Uh, uh more details about the renown system um this is this is definitely going to get you some uh some renown that uh oh, you'll be able to use I almost like favor points or whatever sure yeah i kind of feel like the kid in monsters inc where he goes he's so cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's... laughs> yeah um did you say we were doing some are we taking max hit points? Is that what you previously said? Yeah, that's what we're going to at least start off with the first few levels. Because um, the, the early levels, it's just so easy to get one shot if someone rolls really high on their damage roll. Um, right. So like one crit can take out a character. We don't have to do that. So if you guys like, no, we want it to be a little bit more deadly. Uh, I just need to figure out how to make my rolls public because... It kept saying two GM, and I'm like, no, don't do that. So I got to figure out what the heck's going on there. Points for me. So 900 experience points gets us to level three. So it's, uh, how how many HP do we add? Uh, I, I'll be able to adjust everybody's sheet. Um, I'll look up yes. what your hit die is for whatever, and correct. I'll make sure it's correct right. before next game. Wizards and sorcerers are a D6, so it would be six plus whatever your is. Yeah. Um, to disease. Ooh, nice. So, uh, at the end of every session, one of the things I like to do is a post boredom of telling me about the things that you like and the things that you didn't like. Uh, I really liked the flexibility with giant frog combat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Very cool. laughs> I think there were some good rule of cool moments. That was probably my favorite part too. Yeah, um, that, that's something like I used to be a very rules lawyery player. Uh, John, if he's watching this, will be nodding his head at this point. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the, the, the rule of cool is starting to starting to be one of the primary rules. Like the primary rule is I want to make sure everybody's having fun. I want everybody to have those like shining character moments. And this one was kind of like a, uh, an Ignatius Uri centered centered episode. Um, but uh, definitely the frog getting to swallow someone was amazing. <laughs> so cool. yeah. No, we don't get dragon's breath yet. Dang it. <laughs> um, I think I'm in the same boat as you, Eck. I, I come from a rules lawyery background where I, I would say I generally have a greater grasp of the mechanics of a game than most people do just because I like reading the rule books. Mm -hmm. Um. When I'm running games, I tend to fall back on that. But Rule of Cool, I think, has made a, a large number of great moments in the various games that we've you know, been in as a group, too. So I agree with that. Um, I don't think there was anything, you know, this session that I, I didn't like or that had bothered me. Um, I'll probably touch on what you just said in that this was more of a Yuri heavy thing towards the end. So I'm always very self-conscious of that as a player when my character is in a situation where other characters can only be peripherally involved. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that can be boring for players from the outside, but it can also be really cool sometimes. It was very so exciting. I, I think, think uh, yeah, yeah, that was my favorite part, to be honest. I was kind of sweating a little bit for you. <laughs> so I think as long as everybody's having a good time with that and everybody's character gets those moments for themselves too, then it's perfectly fine. Absolutely. Uh, I just never want to be a spotlight, ho a spotlight hog. Even though that's exactly what Yuri wants. <laughs> that was definitely my favorite part of this episode because I was uh, that was super intense. You know, fighting off every urge to come out there and help. And <laughs> uh, I'm gonna track this down and show them what's what at some point. I feel like the only part that was a little slow for me 
personally was figuring out how to get out of the the dirt tunnel. Yeah, there there was a little bit of stumbling there. I, I think I wasn't explaining stuff enough. I think Basically, it was wires, so that's like nobody's fault. Yeah, uh, I, I think it was just. Um, I was trying to like leave it open for you guys to do what you want, even though there was only one thing to do. So I probably should have just come out and say like, uh, um, like you, you can get out of this area, but you will have to destroy the opening and that will expose the opening to the outside world. So right now it's completely secret and hidden, no chance of being found, but opening this up, which is the only thing you can really do unless you guys come up with something else. Um, and I think that's what you're doing. You're trying to give us the opportunity to use creativity or, or come up with something yeah. that we could do, which I always appreciate. I just think we didn't really have any tools at our disposal with the, our, our group makeup that would have allowed us to do that at this point. Yeah, I'm not really familiar with what a druid can do and what a, a warlock could do. So I was kind of like... <laughs> Druids have an enormous bag of tricks, especially as they level up, because they're one of the classes that can freely pick and choose what spells they have prepared every day. Cool. So you can pick from the druid list, and they've got stuff like uh, pass through stone, pass that trace, they can reshape yeah. the environment. So there's like a lot of cool stuff they can do as we start to level up more. What's that? I'm looking at is that one of them? What's that? Is mold earth a thing? Mold earth is a cantrip that so you can cool. take, but yeah. Yeah, and then there's like a earth shape or stone shape or something like that yeah. where you can carve just big tunnels into stone or earth to stone or yeah, yeah stone there, to mud, mud to there's stone. Like make pillars come out. You can smash people with stone pillars and block ways and tidal waves and firestorm. The the combat last time was getting a little bit samey, so uh, there there were like several other encounters that I can tell you about now if if you're interested. Um, but sure. I just like hand waved them away. There was a, there were a bunch of mercenaries that were hanging out near the mill and they were going to be setting fire to that, but they weren't really setting fire to it. They were trying to draw out the adventurers and set up a trap for them. And so mm -hmm. you get there and you start fighting and they, he runs into the building and you go in there and then everybody gets stabbed with, uh, with spears. Uh, <laughs> I hate to see it. Yeah, I hate to see it. And, uh, <laughs> and it wasn't like super exciting and I didn't feel it really added much to it. And what would happen is like, yeah, go out and save the mill. And then you come back to the keep and it's like, oh yeah. And then go out and save the, uh, uh, save the church. And then you come back and then you're like, oh yeah. Now go out and fight Cyan Wrath. You come back gotcha. and it's like, hey, now go infiltrate the camp Southeast. <laughs> like this is, this is a little bit silly. I think you made a good call in, in the encounters that you presented to, uh, to us in the last one and this one. Yeah, for sure. I think yeah. low-level encounters just suffer from the fact that characters don't have that many options yet. Yeah. So yeah. it starts to expand more. Like, for me, I can punch stuff, I can grapple stuff, I can breathe my dragon breath, and uh, I have two spell slots a day, which will go up a little bit now. So I, ha I have to be a little bit more conservative, but I think that's how most classes are. The giant toad was crazy cool. I really liked it. Oh. That, that was a surprise. I'm like, what? You get that at second level? That's crazy. <laughs> well, that Maybe. was thanks to the moon, circle of moon. Yeah, nice, nice. All right. Oh, yeah. Um, sorry, I'm not sure if somebody mentioned this before, but I didn't like how we decided we were going to go down to the camp to get the egg. And then we were like, OK, let's go to the temple. I didn't want to say anything right then, but I was confused because we decided to go to the, um, we like gave everybody a bunch of reasons why we should go down to the hatchery. And then we just all decided to go to the temple instead. Well, I think it was, wasn't decided yet. I felt like some people had said, yeah, let's go get the egg. Some people said, let's go get the, uh, um, oh, let's, okay. let's go to the keep. Um, or, or let's I think go to we the had temple. I think we had decided at the end of uh, the last session that we were going to go find the egg, but then at the start of the session is when they presented us with the new closer problems, like, "Hey, there are people across town who need help." What um, do you do? And just from a, a moral point of view, it was you know we have an immediate problem that we can solve versus something that's a little bit more esoteric. Yeah, and so, that, that was a little bit my fault um, because the the. The adventure campaign path is on rails um, quite a bit through some of it. And uh, and so when I was thinking about it, like the next, uh, like chapter one is staying in town and then chapter two is going off to save the egg. So I was I didn't know that 
going off to save the egg was like the very next thing you wanted to do. Um, gotcha. uh, so that, that was a little bit on, on me. And then I also hinted at, uh, um, when you guys were talking about that, yeah, I can figure out how to do that. And that would have, would have been fine. Um, Based on what you said, it sounded like you weren't ready to run that encounter yet. Or you yeah. Yeah. And that, then so. and Doug picked up on that. It's like, hey, let's go to the temple, everyone. Everybody's like, yay. <laughs> let's go to the temple. So it's, it's also certainly never my intention to commandeer the party and orient them in one specific direction. So if I did jump the gun on that, I certainly apologize. And it was not my intention to to override anyone's fun or, or the direction. Oh, no, it's, it's fine. Yeah, I think I think everybody had fun, and it was cool and exciting oh, yeah. time. I, so like I am my, looking forward to the egg, though. My That's thing it. with Karen is, Allie is always on board for anything. Karen is just a lazy coward. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> Allie wants to go do these things, so I feel like I have to be true to my girl, who's a trash can. <laughs> That's awesome. I like that. Uh, one of the things that I liked, Allie, uh, you can give yourself inspiration for this, um, was your, your character was like, they're chanting my name, but it's like a positive thing. This is <laughs> this kind of nice. Um, Great. <laughs> I, I picture that, that being like, not, not like a, uh, a character defining moment, but like a, uh, like the start of a turn, maybe like you were just a rapscallion scoundrel, but now you might be a little more inclined to, to do the right thing every once in a while. Now I'm in hero squad. She's addicted to praise now. Yep. Get ready. It's all she wants. Now. Hey, here is pretty good. It's it's no, pretty good. right? <laughs> it's the best. I get this all the time. It's great. <laughs> I wish I was taller. Did pick Paladins do that well too? I remember doing that. What was the question? Uh, it didn't prompt me to pick my oath yet. Interesting. Oh yeah, I wanted to apologize uh, for su suggesting or offering help with a persuasion roll. I feel like you guys didn't like that when I suggested that, so I apologize for that. No, no, it's fine. No, it's fine. Yeah, I miss this stuff all the time. Yeah, I just figured uh... since I had lucky, I might as well have burnt it. You know. Okay. Use your instincts, man. It's all good. Yeah. yeah, are you talking about that? Are you talking about uh, approaching the combat encounter with a persuade on the the lead cultist guy? I, I know um, what she's talking about. So. Ba basically, what happened was, uh, Ali rolled one on a a natural one on a persuasion roll, uh, yeah, right. and then after that, she rolled two twenties. But before that, I suggested uh, that I might be able to help because I have a good persuasion. But I felt like that wasn't really something people liked when I suggested to help, so I'm sorry. I don't think, yeah, I don't think there was any negativity yeah, there. Not at all. I, mean, not at all. I always like uh, when people come up with creative ideas on how they can help one another, so even if it's just like involving each other in our actions in a supportive capacity, I think that's always fun too. Yeah. Just mechanically, the way I was kind of wanting to run that was uh, each person gets a, uh, gets a way to help, and since you had already contributed to it, I didn't want to uh, uh, I wanted Allie to be able to kind of shine or fail on her own. And so she that's, did both. She did both. She did both. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anybody was upset by that. Mm -hmm. No, not at all. Not at all. Okay. Not at all. Cool. I liked how we didn't kill Yuri. That was a favorite of mine. I also, <laughs> I also liked how... Um, Doug made the scar something definitely visible, something yeah. that he can't really easily cover up, because cool. I feel like he could have just made it a slash on his chest or something that would always be covered up by armor, but he didn't do that, and I feel like that was cool. Heck no, man, that's a badge of honor. Absolutely, those are those are the character moments you live for. Mm -hmm. Heck yeah. So, mm -hmm. gotta, gotta watch him come beaten and broken out the other side. If your characters aren't suffering, they're not really living. <laughs> <laughs> we we did end the session a little bit soon. Um, uh, nor normally, I'll shoot for around four hours. Um, I'll try not to go much past that. Uh, but I feel like this was just a really natural, good stopping point. And I feel like this was a long enough session. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Cool. So I've, I've already decided what I leveled up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to keep playing. Uh, 
yeah, we'll be uh, doing this again in a couple of weeks. We'll be playing uh, same bat time, same bat channel. So Saturday at noon. And Sounds ready. I look forward well, to seeing great. you guys again. Thanks for Absolutely. watching, everybody. All right. Thank Bye, guys. For, uh, thank you for running for us as always. I Thanks. appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank, thank you, you for running. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. You bet. <laughs>